And we're live for those at the table that might not realize it. Uh, welcome once again to another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew home game D&D 5th edition. I need a lot more adjectives in there just to fill it all out. Uh, a thing that does the thing. The thing where things, people happen to things and things and things. Uh, experimenting with some new lighting, experimenting with this and that, uh, new ideas of scheduling, which is apparently at random now for the weeks. We're going to try uh, to do another game today and then another game in two weeks. But, but, uh, let me introduce all the people around the table. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, the host, GM, and Fool. Uh, if it's a mistake in the lore, uh, I will quickly create uh, another metaphysical instant to cover it, so we're good. Going around the table for the players and characters. Hi, I'm Jody. I play Clarg, the half-orc fighting rogue, and uh, apparently he's recovering from some sort of uh, vision. Hmm. Uh, I am Eldara, the uh, wood elf druid, who really doesn't want to be here anymore, but wants to figure out what the fuck is going on. <laughs> it's true. I'm Pat, and I'm playing Kujima, the uh, bard ranger. Hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Zagus, half elf wizard. And Who Kujima, looks pretty rough right now? It does look pretty rough. <laughs> uh, do you want to describe what the roughness looks like? Uh, as you recall? Well, his face still looks sketchy, and he's kind of feeling. What's the word I'm looking for? Not angry, but like. <laughs> how do you put what the fuck into a feeling? Like, what's the word for that? <laughs> well, irritated? Yeah. <laughs> irritated with the Worried vehicle. about Clark, because Clark just tried to kill him. But now he's, now he's normal, so. It's, <laughs> Normal and stoned. <laughs> True. And, uh, yeah, a couple of notes there. Um, the right-hand side, I believe it is, of uh, of Zakis's face is sort of grayish and almost lifeless. Uh, his right arm also has a sort of gray tinge to the skin, almost looks like uh, almost, almost rubbery. It's a little soft to the touch, even. As though in the internals are, are tra starting to try to change, which might come about. Big uh, come about. I'm supposed to do all the speaking for a lot of times here. Uh, came about because of an attack. Uh, something wormed its way into your body, which you were freed from. Uh, another note is Kujima uh, is a kobold. Uh, mm -hmm. So for your mental image uh, in there, uh, and uh, uh, Clark is carrying a very large. Uh, reaper. A uh, stick. Essentially. A large uh, hooked weapon, if you will. Uh, and the fifth member of your crew is a somewhat timid dry dryad named Radix, who I had kind of forgotten about in the last battle, but what I'm going to say, here's my metaphysical patch for that. She got scared and ran up the stairs, and she had been fighting uh, whenever they had disappeared off to that side. They actually were moving up the stairs, and so they kind of fought into her, she hid, and they would come back down to fight you. But yes, a little bit of a recap of what happened in the last session. Radix had the right idea. That well, that's, that's her general <laughs> idea. After figuring out the magical mechanism by which Imril sealed his tower, the group descended down into the buried spiral tower. Room after room told a story of a growing madness, from scarred walls counting enormous numbers, to the remnants of experiments and a scattering of notes with various proclamations. These painted a portrait of a growing obsession and a project of unknown dimensions, a growing distrust of those who had once been allies, and a growing desperation to overcome the ravages of unimaginable time in a timeless place. After reaching a depth of a dozen or so floors, the group was set upon by a group of ghastly, faintly solid ghosts. In one particular, in one in particular, the remains of an elven woman of some power caused hearts to stop with their scream. With skill and luck, the group overcame these beings, but not without suffering some danger. However, when the elven's woman ghost is being dissipated by Clark's reaper, he saw her stand before him, and she declared him herself to be the former Queen Isolde of Vatur, and vowed to help Clark if he would assist her in getting her vengeance. And so we open in this round tower, just moments after this battle. Some of you are still wounded, some of you are still woozy, and Clark seemed to have stared off into nothingness for a moment. But now, all seems quiet. The sounds, the screams of these, these uh, terrible creatures have died down. 
and all that remains is that empty sound, slight echoes every time you move of the, of the rock on, on the ground bouncing around these hard, hard stones. And a faint moaning. And a faint moaning? Mm-hmm. Ah, yes. At I, least, re- I read that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If it's really quiet. If, it's, if you're really super quiet, very moaning. distant. Moaning from what? From Clark. So. Oh, uh, question to the DM. Mm-hmm. Which room are we in? Like, I know there was a laboratory. Oh, are we still in that one? or are we No, you were down in one of the lower okay. rooms that we're was... We're in the place uh, with the vivisection table. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a lab. Where, well, there have been numerous r- lab-like rooms. This one actually does, I think, is the one that had the... Mm-hmm. the yeah, uh, like a slanted table yeah. with, like... Handcuffs. Vivisection would be interpreting it too deeply, yeah. uh, and not necessarily correctly either. But it did have what looked like the remnants of, I think, stone-based uh, clasps for where hands and feet mm-hmm. would be. And for the moment, it's quiet. Are they all gone? Well, that was fucked. Yeah. Did you hear anything? Where's that Mona camera from? Oh, that's me. He holds up the weapon. Right, uh... What, what was that about? <laughs> Strange birds fly by the darkness. Well, uh, As in, why did you try to kill me? Did I? Yes. Oh. And I'll point to the wound. Oh. Uh, but yes, that, that was you. Sorry. Well, I'm why? I'm not a doctor. Sorry, I can't fix that. I can only make those. I had a vision. Is that helpful? Sure. What was it? Uh... I saw uh, one of the ghost ladies. She said she was uh, Queen of Sold. Queen of what? Of Vator. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Which one? The one that was screaming loudly and killing everybody? The one I just put down there, I don't know, a minute ago. I'll look to where he's pointing. There's what, no what? remnants of it whatsoever. Uh, it vanished with the last hit that he did of it, but it would have been the screaming one. Okay. She was dressed really well. I think she might have been an elf or something. Yes, no, that she would have been. Seems accurate. Anyway, she asked me to uh, avenge her. Avenge her for, for what? I don't know. She abdicated, as far as I know. Or what do I know? Like, just the, the general... Legend, the legend goes that uh, uh, the uh, king uh, and the queen both abdicated their throne at the behest of Emerald Amakir to build the library. Yeah. Over, over Well over 100 years ago. Since then, no one has seen either one of them. Yeah, they've not been heard of... She has unfinished business. I've been asked to finish it. Did she say anything else? What happened to her? Not really. I don't know if he abdicated because... I don't know, they were convinced by Emerald, too? She's the one who... Her castle became the library. I'm gonna go stand guard at the top of the stairs down. Okay. You're startled momentarily as Radix kind of comes almost out of the shadows, and she seems startled to have almost run into you as well. Well, I'm going to the stairs down. He's going to the stairs down? Okay. In that case, that does not happen. Okay. Well, the rest of you do hear uh, Radix sort of coming from the top stairs, just sort of... <clears throat> are, are, are they all gone? I think so. We don't know. There's still the issue of the uh, Glumpkins that could pop out through the walls at any minute. She looks nervously at the walls, kind of taps one of them. It seems solid. I'll just explain to her how the Zorns work and the reason why they're called Glunkins. And at okay. any point, if anybody wants to get just Zachus to shut up, just say so. <laughs> we just let you. Okay. Yeah, the, your voice echoes around the halls uh, and kind of echoes upward. Uh, Radix, numerous times, as you kind of probably take on this almost professorial territory and it's like, hey, this is an opportunity to edu- educate someone. I yeah. know what I'm talking about. Every once in a while she's like, Shh, can you lower your voice a little bit? There might be more. Um, as she kind of nervously stands there. If When we first found Brinwick, he was in this cave and was terrified to leave because of Glumpkins. You likely remember them from here. Probably. Who's Brinwick? Oh, he's a Former friend of ours. He's a friend of Emerald, too, especially according to these texts. And I'll hastily pull out pieces of paper, probably drop one or two. So he was here? Yes. It's referenced in a piece of paper number 25. <laughs> Where is he now? Back in Vatur. 
as far as we know. He left? Apparently. That's I, where I, I didn't met him. know that was possible. It must be. I mean, Emerald left as well. When you said your friend said he wasn't here, I, I thought you meant he had passed on permanently. No, he escaped the shadow. Oh. We know it's possible. I didn't think that was possible. It's just incredibly difficult and improbable. It's always been here as long as I've been here, and... Hmm. That's weird. For the moment, there's no sound coming. How far down the stairs do you go? Yeah, at the top of the stairs. Okay. I'm um, just looking down there. Make a perception check. Hearing based, if that matters. I don't think so. Mm, 13. Okay. As you're standing up there, and this conversation is going on behind you and echoing around, every once in a while there's a lull in the conversation, and then you kind of strain a little bit, look a little bit ahead. There's a couple of faint sounds. One very, very faint. Um, you're not quite sure what you can make of it. It's almost like a steady... Uh, steady rushing sound but constant like you can't really make out that as little ebbs and flows but not much the other sound you make out infrequently is the sound of what a rock moving something like that from down the stairs somewhere that's messed up hmm. while they're talking I'll take a quick walk down the stairs okay um did you want to say something? Just a quick question. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there time for Clark to clean and uh, kind of overlook his weapon for a while? Maybe focus on it? Try to listen to what it's saying? You can certainly try that. If no one interrupts you, then it certainly happens. Sounds like there's other conversations going on. So. Okay. They'll be are, talking for hours. Are you going to step into the center hollow part of the room? This room, uh, again, kind of has one of those slanted tables made of rock. But um, otherwise, it's mostly empty. Just where there's enough room to sit down yeah. comfortably. But it's more space in there, whereas the yep. hallways are pretty sure. narrow. So you kind of go in there and pull out your, your whetstone yep. and probably your cloth and all that, a little bit of oil maybe to help, mm -hmm. and start to do that. Shh. Try to get, get off a little bit. Some of Zacchaeus off the... Feeling, <laughs> a little bit of, feeling a little bit of the ritual, come back again, this sort of, this soldierly ritual of always make sure you take care of your weapon and your weapon will take care of you kind of kind of thing. Yeah. Thinking back a little bit to the the sergeants you dealt with before and how they would drill this into you and having seen others with terrible habits and they'll pull out their weapon and having a hard time because there's a little crust that's built up on it or there's a nix in it and they're just whacking away at the enemy and nothing seems to be working and then you look at the weapon and it's got this nasty little uh, uh, crack in the blade that they probably should have taken care of from poor poor maintenance. He's going to try to specifically reach out to Queen Azold if he okay. can, but okay. it's a thousand voices. So it's it's a thousand voices, and as you open yourself up to the, to the ritual and let your, your body kind of go on automatic, your mind is spinning and trying to pick out among these voices. Make a wisdom uh, check. Sure. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. Very faintly, you're starting to be able to differentiate between these people, but not yet able to pull up anyone specific. Certainly. As you move down the stairs, Kuzima, Kuzima, are you are you stealthing down the stairs? You're just mm -hmm. gonna walk down. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna sneak down the stairs. And okay. see what's there. So, as you're talking, um, and you kind of. What's your, your passive perception's high enough? Right, right. You notice Kuzima kind of go and just sort of disappear down the stairs, and you don't Well, I was outside him. the room. Um, they're still standing in the hallway. Um, he's the only one that's actually moved into the room. Because yeah. all the fighting took place in the hallway. Uh, well, a lot of it, like, she was in the middle of the room. For a while, but I ended yeah. up in the hallway. Yeah, pretty I mean, much everybody in there. Um, you do kind of notice Kuzima just moving around, and then you don't hear from him. You move down and around the stairs, and hear another little rock moving. Are you casting something? No, nope, just checking my stealth roll. Okay, what was your stealth roll? 22. Okay. Um, I still say yeah. <laughs> yeah, I rolled out. It, he's around the corner at this point, um, but you're vaguely aware of the footsteps getting quieter and quieter as... as uh, cause I I'm noticed a, the lack of kobold. More or less, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, 
I'm just going to what should happen, and I'm going to <laughs> say that I need to sit down for a bit. Um, Mechanics-wise, I'm at under half my hit points and only have two spell slots and no wild shape. Uh, so I would like a short rest. <laughs> Okay. If possible. I'd like a long rest. <laughs> I mean, a long rest would be nice. Yeah, we probably don't have that luxury without dying from something coming up the stairs. So you go around the stairs and get to the bottom where the stairs are. And where there would be normally an opening into another floor, you see there is a pile of rocks that have been placed in the way. And as you stand there and watch, you see a uh, an arm out of one of the walls and kind of push the edge of the rock and throw it down in and then the arm retreats into the wall. The arm looks large, uh, three-fingered claw on the end of it, uh, kind of mm -hmm. a brownish rough skin. Like what I saw last time. Uh, yes, yeah. As a th is it throwing a rock down as in it's getting rid of this pile or it's filling it's adding, in the... It's adding to okay. the pile. Uh, what else is in the room here? Uh, this is just the end of the stairs, so there's nothing. Okay. There's no room yet. That that room has been blocked off from you. Okay. Um, from here, you can a little more distinctly hear that rushing sound. Make another perception check. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Um, listening to it for a few moments, you kind of start to realize that it is the burbling sound of water rushing. Hmm. Not a huge rush, but steady. How far are we from the Evil River? Um, at this point, uh, because you've kind of been moving directly inward, probably a mile or two from there. Okay, so not too terribly far. Yeah. But the water hadn't moved beyond its banks, and if you recall, the it almost seemed to be this this endless war between the vegetation of the festering and the and the, the the water itself, each one trying to claim the land. Okay, I'll head back up then. Okay. After my conversation dies out or I realize nobody else is listening, I'll look around the room to see if there's anything useful. Maybe another piece of paper? I think you already looked around this room. I forget if it was the other room. I think you looked around mm -hmm. this room already. Okay. Um, and other than kind of seeing Clark um, going through the motion, which you've seen him do before, but he seems somewhat less simultaneously unfocused and focused. Uh, very direct and deliberate in all of his mo motions, but his eyes seem to be staring a thousand yards. Um, besides that, there is the, the remainder of these restraints and this, uh, this table that is here. Um, you look at the design of it, and it's actually kind of clever. It's all made from stone. Mm -hmm carefully uh, uh, manufactured, carefully transformed, um, such that even the restraints themselves can actually be sized up or down depending on what creature or what person is placed inside of it. And you think with a couple of motions, uh, even despite its age, and there's a little bit of dust accumulated on it, it still moves fairly easily, um, such that it could accommodate anything as small as uh, probably even dryad size like Radix, which is really small, it's even smaller than Kujima, uh, all the way up to someone who's maybe even the size of Paul. Whoa. So it was not designed for one specific experiment. It was designed as a platform. It's a reusable tool. Yeah. Kujima, you make your way back up. Mm -hmm. You see them kind of puttering around. Alzara is probably sitting down at this point. Yeah, I, I'm leaning on a bookshelf or something. Okay, there's kind of a, a couple of tables here that are uh, uh, not so much bookshelves. There's no books at all. Yeah. I would have found them. <laughs> <laughs> we should rest. The tunnel is blocked further down. We can't get through. I'm already, like, sitting, going, mm-hmm. Is there anything like, under the said. table? Like... Whatever was there has long been uh, either taken away or you see a couple of small uh, shards that look like they're made of stone and rounded, kind of like a vessel, like a, uh, a, a, um, a cup or a bowl or something. But um, looking at it closer, um, you kind of realize this was probably deliberately smashed and it took a lot of effort to smash something this size. Okay. And are the locks magical at all or no? I mean, not the locks, but like the restraints. Um, are you going to use detect magic or just examine them with the eye? Just examine them. Okay. Roll an arcane check. Seven plus thirteen, so 
So dirty 20? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, looking at them, there doesn't seem to be too much magical about the restraints. There's a sort of residual magical sense you get off of them, and you can kind of see that as you look closer, there were some tracings on them, but the traces themselves have been worn off. Uh, again, kind of deliberately and a little bit roughly as well. At first, what you thought was just un, un uh, hewn stone is actually hewn stone that's been carved and, and torn apart. Okay. As if something was deliberately trying to destroy this. You gonna take a short rest? Yep. Okay. Probably Any particular like preparations for your short rest, or just sit down and relax? No hummus. Okay. If anybody sees anything, yell. And is the table like leaning upwards like this, or is it more like flat? Uh, no, it's it's leaning a, a bit, like a like a forty-five or, or forty-degree angle. Okay. Uh, and it's permanently built that way, so to so the person is kind of standing on it or leaning on it, and can be worked on, if you will, okay. if that's what it's for. Well, you all uh, relax a bit. What's the what's the tune like that uh, Kujima uses? Just humming something. Is it meant to be inspirational or calming? It's or a resting? healing bonus mm -hmm. thing. It's but, just yeah, calming, whatever. Okay. I don't have anything specific in mind. Okay. In this particular space, in this enclosed space, it is almost as though your voice is doubled as it bounces off the solid walls, but. Unlike some of the other terrible sounds you've heard, this one does relax you. And so you do achieve a short rest mm -hmm. without being interrupted. And a d6? Yeah, a d6 on top or whatever oh, you normally You're still my hit dice, goddammit. <laughs> so you, you don't have any hit dice left? No. Wow, okay. <laughs> You'd still get the D6, probably. you still get the bonus, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you are kind of taking a short rest. Mm. I'll be nice to you if you're... So D6 plus two, because I got plus two constitution. No, no. Oh. It's D6. only for actual hit dice. Yep. And do we get max because you're a song? So mm, uh, no. That's what no. enables the D6. No, my candle is the max one, but I'm not using that right now. Four. Okay, I'll take that. Okay. I'm still going to be a one Holy wonder. Holy crap, that's a bit full. Healing would be good. Sure. What's that? Uh, what was that? No, oh, I'm probably still gonna be a one-hit wonder, like nine HP instead of five HP. But like, hey, that makes at least a like a rock from the, like a pebble falling from the ceiling isn't gonna kill me. <laughs> it's probably true. Uh, each of you roll a perception check while this is going on. Audible or uh, hearing does affect it. If that's anything for each of you. Nope, not for any of us. Nine. Okay. Eight. We just gotta get the spell sauce back. No, and I'll tell them that uh, there's one of those earth things down there. It's First roll of set number 100. It's what's filling up the hallway. There should be some sort of fanfare, uh, in case the people at home missed it. The first roll of, of uh, Marie's 100th dice, dice set. I can't even fathom that. And I have a lot of dice, but... What was her roll? Yeah, what was On the roll? die, it was a 9. Okay. Uh, for perception, that does make it a 17, though. Okay. 25. 25? Okay. Um, Which is, to be fair, consistent for dice that Brody has <laughs> gave, <laughs> given me. First roll for those ones tend to not be great. You have to wear off the, uh, the confusion as, you know, the dice are supposed to choose the master, right? Um, as the time goes on, and you take a, a good solid hour to kind of relax, and the uh, hummed song that Kujima fills your ears for most of that time, um, both Clark and Elzera, you start to hear as the, the ebbing song fades away um, what Kujima had been talking about, where Kujima had mentioned just a moment ago that there is one of those things down there and you hear the steady uh not steady sort of the the periodic dropping of another rock as they're continuing to yeah. add more rocks to the pile below also somewhere below that there's running water yeah that part you weren't able to perceive from here but um so Radix has kind of been on edge most of this time. You haven't seen her. She kind of disappears in the shadows wherever possible. Um, but she does seem to be keeping guard. Does not mention having seen anything. Why were we here again? 
people to escape the creeping forest and oh, yes, but why were we coming in this direction there was something we were to the heart do. of the forest uh, apparently it's their, here. their mentor hmm. worked and lived here for a period yes he's made it out I presume we may find a way out the same way possibly what is my ring saying are we getting closer or further? It, you take a moment to kind of concentrate on it. Um, make a um, hmm. make a charisma check. Fuck. To sense these feelings. Just straight charisma. Sure. Cool. Oh no. I'm not going to use that one. That one's been rolling today. <laughs> Double digits. Okay. Um, good. So total thirteen. Okay. S roll the fourteen. You take some time and relax, and you're kind of probably running the finger, running your fingers over the ring, kind of in memory, also of the the person who who, uh, who it's attached to. And it's strange. You can feel still that sensation of a direction from it, but it is pulling outside. It feels muted a bit, as though this place itself is somehow shielding between you and that expression. But there's something else. There's something else which is really strange. You'd f sort of sensed, first of all, the secondary uh, sensation which led back to the grove. But there's something almost resonant, um, like it's humming a little bit. And as you look down on it and kind of focus on it a little bit, you notice tiny little sparks around the edges of the ring uh, in the metal itself, almost as though it, is, it itself is reacting to something. Um, and so kind of little little minute reflections you'd never noticed before. They're kind of there and energetic and then they sort of wink out of existence. And orienting yourself a little bit, they definitely seem to be pointing downward. It wants to go down. It's weird. We don't have a choice but to go down. So the thing placing the rocks, it's the same Kind of creature we saw. <laughs> Apparently, Kuzima is taking this rest thing literally, which is good. I think even Kuzima could use a little rest. Does anybody have a symbol of Palexia? We left him at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do I still have the book? Like, it wasn't like the good edition, or did I leave it? I think you left most of your books behind. You said last time that you'd left. Yeah, because okay. you weren't really expecting to go anywhere, so you weren't packing for a trip. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> yeah, I don't I mean, have anything in my bag. I mean, basically because you had the bag of holdings, but you had any of your gear at all, because you just leave it in there. No, we don't have it anymore. It's like your portable home. Um, my bag of holding is hooked onto me at all times. I'll grab a piece of paper and draw the symbol of Palexia on it with one with a never-ending pen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, make a uh, performance check. I'll give you advantage because your eidetic memory essentially will allow you to remember these things. Twelve. Tests. Performance, that's probably yeah, just the twelve. Yeah. <laughs> twelve, okay. Yeah, it, you're doing it from memory and the, the picture in your mind is perfect. Getting the little subtleties in the sort of cresting wave pattern of, of Paluxy is a little bit difficult. It's probably because uh, I got a, like a halberd in my shoulder too. Like, that could be too. <laughs> that could be too. Um, and so it, it kind of takes a second pass to get it to where your standards are at. You think back to the library and think of just, you know, probably how, how polite and yet you know behind that politeness would be a deep embarrassment from, from Thea if she were to see your fledgling attempts to try to actually paint this. Yeah. <laughs> which you know for her would have been both seemingly easy but also deep somehow. But yours is a passable symbol of it. Mind you, it probably would have taken her two months. She would have taken her time. <laughs> there would be a room full of discarded versions as well, and also in context. But So, uh, does this look okay, you think? It's recognizable. Uh, kind of looks like it. Maybe if we show these to the creatures, they'll let us pass. Uh, I tried communicating with them when we first entered this tower, but Maybe I said the wrong thing. Maybe it's just my personality. Maybe if we just show them the symbol, then we won't get killed. All 
All right. Well, aside from quiet shrugging, each of you have had a chance to catch your breath, um, clear your mind, reset yourself back to a comfortable position, ready to go. Radix seems calmer, <laughs> but not exactly calm, if that makes any sense. She seems continually on edge. So, are, are we are we going down? I suppose we can't go up. Okay. Hmm? We can go up. It's not blocked. But we can't exit the tower. Well, no. We could. We just have to deal with the forest. And be eaten to death by vines. We walked for... Like, how many hours through it already? Yes, but... It wasn't that bad. The clearing was... Well, Finn, the whistler... The guy on the rock... Mm -hmm. Was keeping the vegetation at bay. In the clearing, yes. The rest of the way We walked for hours through the forest. I was able to find a pathway through it, but... Mm -hmm. They will have grown over the top of this. Yeah, you just have to find the... Yeah, you have to be careful. Did you find what you were looking for? No. 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 We don't know what we're looking for. I so, say we go down. I say we go down. Mm-hmm. At least engage with the creature, and as I look around, who looks the healthiest? It's a good question. Clark Probably. does not look bloodied. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm full of death. Hmm? I'm at full health. Okay. Uh, I used over half my hit dice, but I'm up to full. Do you remember <laughs> the Glumpkins in the Serene Sanctum? Yeah. They seemed to follow up Alexia, and they were helping us in the fight. Yeah, if but you those showed them this, were hatched from there. Yes, it was. I think one other thing you guys might remember from them is they were specifically bought and bound there. Yeah. Okay. That might be the that might be a difference. Who but knows? They had hatched there. Because didn't we literally watch them hatch? Right. Yeah, they ha- they hatched when we got there, and the ghost guy mentioned that they had uh, they had bought rituals to bind them to the surface yeah. of the temple. So we have to find out what these ones are bound to. Wait, Emrun did not just tell us this. <laughs> A bit of memory from the experience yeah. floats back to your mind, but I did literally. Also say the same thing. Yeah, right. Not not to that detail, but so so showing them this picture might just because do one it. elf listens to one god doesn't mean that all elves do. Right. I suppose Emerald, from the looks of these letters, helped kill Valexia. So, if you want to go down there, you're probably going to encounter that river. Yes, that's fine. that did not go well last time. Well, now we know what not to do. And my arm twitches, and so does my eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was from just a minor dunking. I mean, are you ready to fight those things again? I'm not. Those things may not be there. I could use a better nap, but... I have none of my magic left. I only have my two highest spells. We could look at the rock pile, see if it's movable, and see if the creature will can somehow be reasoned with. If it's bound to this temple, Enril may have... Mm-hmm. What could we show it to pacify the creature? Is when, you, when you mentioned you were a friend of Emerald's last time it tried to kill you. Or at least hurt you. I don't think this is in service to Emerald in any way. But it didn't kill me. It smacked me in the face and ran away. Yeah. It could have killed us during our encounter with the screaming banshees, and they didn't. They seem to serve something. I just don't know what. I don't Themselves. think they serve anything. I think they're just here. Not everything has a, a reason for existing. And none of these notes mention Emeril having servants here. As far as I can tell, this and the bridge are the only two places where the forest and the water meet and their safety. Mm-hmm. Maybe they came here because they had to. It's possible. Although they're trying to fill it up too, so maybe they're trying to get rid of it. Either way, if we go down there, we are probably going to encounter that sludge again. 
I'm guessing there's a way around it down mm. there. Hopefully. I can do you think we should recuperate first? Your I don't choice. want to... I mean... The most powerful of us are unlimited magical capability at the moment. If we're going to go after this, we should do it after, uh, with all of our resources. Your choice, but we're destined to be here. Mm. We can always go check it out and turn back if it's impassable. I checked it out, it's impassable. Does your condition give you voices? Condition? In your face. Why? Does it speak to you? No, but it's slimier than... I'll touch the other side of my face. Oh, no, no, slime on my face. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the left side of your face, which is more or less normal, yeah. is probably just sweaty. Yeah. Uh, but the other side feels clammy. Um, Minor conjuration. Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, you can see this sort of fading away of the natural skin tone that you have, and even the hair is starting to, to almost thin out a little bit and grow lighter. Um, lighter in color or lighter in uh, just fullness? A little bit of each, a little oh, bit of shit. each, as the skin there seems to also smooth out considerably. So even the normal natural wrinkles of a human or an elven uh, features are all kind of washed away as it seems almost to simplify that. And you also see that gray eye staring back at you. Okay. Uh, you look fucked up. Your condition may not speak to you, but your condition speaks to me. We did should your, probably hurry. Did your father go bald early, too? No. He still has a full head of hair. Ah. It's, has it, has, since when did this happen? The parasite got pulled out, the arm is dry, has it crept up? It's hard to tell time. It, it was at that point when the, when mm -hmm. the parasite okay. was being taken out. So it probably hasn't it, progressed. It's, it's almost as though, like, it was progressing quickly and then just sort of relaxed and settled in. Okay. And now, sort of the long-term effects are starting to be seen. Well, it doesn't seem to be progressing. Maybe it'll go away once we escape, once we escape this foul place. It's your lives. Well, yes. And... Emerald didn't Wait. grow back his arm. But I mean, uh, why did you say this condition spoke to you? Or it tells me I don't have long. You look like shit. Well, whose fault is that? Yours. Somebody, Debate, somebody, debatable. Somebody, somebody with a glaive. That, was, that had nothing to do with that. Well, no. Well, his being almost dead. <laughs> yeah. I think his Emerald... being almost dead is, but what we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> if I think we you're... could close up the door, maybe we could stay here and hide. There's a door? Well, there's an opening into the central part, which doesn't have a door of its oh, own, but yeah, it's a doorway. doorway yeah. mm, I don't have anything to close it with. We could just post guards. If more ghostly creatures attempt to kill us, they can just float through the walls anyway, so... Mm -hmm. That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Fun thoughts to go to sleep with. Do you mind if I go have a look? I'll be quiet. Oh. I'll be quiet go as ahead. well. I'd like to see. There was nothing down there but the thing throwing stones down in. Okay. Um, Clark would like to go down and just have a peek. He's not going to try to affect anything. He just wants to okay. see what the, what the progress is like. It sounded like Zacchaeus was going as yeah, well. Yeah, I'll follow Bill. I'm behind Clark. Okay. Are you going to be quiet about it, or yes. okay? So make a stealth roll, each of you. Stealthy, good job. Twelve. I have uh, twenty-seven. I stubbed my toe. <laughs> Shh, we got this. Okay, and both of you make perception checks as well, then. Sure. Hmm. Sixteen. Uh, twenty. Twenty-six. Okay. Do you want to switch dice? Sorry. <laughs> and and <laughs> marching order is Clark going first and then Zach? Is, is that what you want to think about? Yeah, this? I was okay. it. Just so I can I can describe it. So as you turn around and, and the, the stairway goes pretty much 180 at this point to get down to the next level, um, you're moving along pretty quietly, probably have stowed the, the Reaper because yeah. it's hard to use in the hallway anyway. Uh, and making almost no noise at all. You do hear Zachis behind you sort of stepping along. He's doing a good effort at it, but you he's know he's there. He you know he's there. Best. Probably something else does as well. Just before you round the corner, you hear another one of those rocks drop 
Um, but it, it sounds almost, a, you'd heard a few more before this. This one sounded heavier. Not that it was a heavier rock, more that it was done in a hurry. And as you round the corner, you see, as Kujima had described, this, this filled up hallway of rocks. Loose stones, most of them about the size of your fist, some about the size of your head, just kind of thrown haphazardly into this pile. No sign of motion at the moment, mm -hmm. but um, it m matches the description that Kuzaima had. Okay. Um, make, uh, let's call this a survival roll for each of you. 14. Luckily, Zach is his record book survival. Yeah, with a plus five bonus, but that's still only a nine. Nine? Okay. <laughs> to you, this looks like a filled in hallway full of rocks. To you, there's one other thing that stands out. Because that last rock was louder, mm -hmm. and because you'd only heard a few of them here and there, they were doing this to try to do it quietly so no one noticed. Mm. And then they probably heard him come down the hallway, drop the rock faster than they intended, and moved away. And are hidden, probably. Okay. Or moved away. So this looks like a loose pile of rocks. It was not packed in, it was not formed, it was just done, and done fairly uh, haphazardly um, but it is a pile of rocks that's blocking that as you look you can see there's a little gap across the top that hadn't quite filled in all that stuff there and no motion at the moment is there, a, is there enough room to peek uh, you can climb up on top of the rocks and take a closer look we'll quietly do that all right um, what's your acrobatics or uh, athletics athletics is currently 11 plus oh yeah no problem as you kind of scramble up on the rocks. They're loose and they kind of move a little bit under you and you kind of stop a couple of times to readjust to make sure you're not making too much noise. And as you move up towards the top of it, you can also now clearly hear what Kujima had described as well, that sort of rushing sound. Um, and because he'd already said it sounded like water, mm -hmm. you can identify it as that. If you hadn't already had that foreknowledge, it might have been a little, little squirrely. Um, there's no light on the other side. Um, no light but you can see in through the hallway and it just looks like this is about about uh, three or four feet deep it's not even that deep as far okay. as it's meant to hold you here and perhaps even maybe just shy off anybody who wasn't willing to do anything about it mm. but that's all it is it's meant to be in the way okay um does the sound of the water match the rough pace of the river does Not at sound, all. Does it sound faster or slower? It, it sounds slower and a lot less voluminous. Okay. So more like a stream, more less than a river. Yeah, that'd be a fair way to put it. Okay. At least from this distance, you can't really hear a lot of it. It does not sound like it's on the other side of the rocks. Okay. It sounds as though it's, it's echoing up somewhere the, the, down there. Yeah. The, the hard stone. Okay. Um, uh, Clark will point to Zakis and go... Are you pointing to go back? Or? Yeah, to go back. Okay. Did you want to take any closer look? You saw Clark kind of crawl up on top of these. Probably not. I'll just ask some questions later. You were just there for more emotional support. No, I just wanted to see what was up. <laughs> want to go where the big guy goes. Cause yeah. Somebody to hide behind. Yeah. <laughs> Even well, though he tried to kill me once. Yeah, it doesn't always work out. <laughs> yeah. We're probably going for, what, ten minutes, if that? About that, yeah. Especially when you're, like, terrifully walking up these stones. I'll okay. back away slowly. Okay. I am going to start looking at what I can use to barricade the door of the room we're in. Pretty much everything that's in this room is made of stone or is broken stone. There's really not much other that's that's physically here. Yeah. Um, it's as though that was the one resource he had to build with. Uh, but by, basically, I can become something that can lift stone. Uh, True. So it's determining, is there enough to barricade, or do I need to go to the upper floor and Looking get stuff? at this, one of the things that strikes you is this is molded stone from a spell. Yeah. So it's not separate pieces of stone. Most of it's molded together. So in order to move even the table that's there, you'd have to kind of break it off of the floor uh, and tear it down. Or, and Earth or, Elemental know. has... Each. I mean, it is it is intended for breaking stuff, so uh, <laughs> it would not be quiet. Uh, and it's a smallish room, so you kind of have to be careful about doing it. But if no one's standing in the room, you're not going to hurt anybody. And you could crush this room and then pile it up against the door if you wanted to. 
that would be something feasible, especially in that form. Yeah. So, because right now we're looking at needing somewhere to stay that's safe. And... We could go to an upper floor. Well, yeah, but we would still want to barricade that floor. Every, yeah, everything we've issue. encountered here moves through stone anyways. Blockading the, the things isn't going to do anything but keep us in. Yeah. Yes, but it will give us a choke point. Uh, well, no, because they can go through Fair. it at will. Um, at by this point, the things we've encountered. By this point, as you're kind of having this discussion, and 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 because I'm as pouring a bit of water on your idea, uh, the two of you have returned, and you can kind of hear overhear them discussing this. We're back. So, they uh, they're building up a barricade. It doesn't look like they're filling in the room. Did you see them? No. But I heard that water, like you said. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like it's less a river and more a stream. So that makes me think it might have put a channel through the building. So there may, be, there may be a way around. They may have a bridge or something. Mm -hmm. um, also, the constructors, the builders, the rock people, I'm okay. assuming, uh, they don't seem to want to engage right away. They wouldn't have mm -hmm. built a wall otherwise. And they were trying to do it on the sly. What? How do you know all these things? Because he's smart. I use my eyes. <laughs> I'll, I'll shoot Al's arrow at a dirty look. <laughs> <laughs> I can summon a bunch of minor servants if we have a significant rest. Uh, they could pull a bunch of the rocks out if there's not much there. I can pull a bunch of the rocks out. It could be a day's work for me or more. We could okay. attempt to communicate. I could attempt to communicate with them again. Hopefully, it would be more efficient than last time. I fear that doing so right now would result in my death. Possibly not, but j just in case. You get to choose that one at least. Mm -hmm. Are you implying I should go back there and chat with them? No, I'm saying if you wait too long, it'll happen anyway. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. There are ways around it with magic. But anyway. No doubt you'll find those secrets further down the temple. Excellent. I hear votes for rest. Mm -hmm. I don't mind taking a few watches. If you wizardy types need your moment. I can take a watch. I'm, oh. I'm not having trouble sleeping anymore, am I? No, I don't think so. That's already been dull with. We fixed that problem. Yeah. Clog points in his face. <laughs> oh. No, that, that is me player not remembering. <laughs> it's been a while, but yeah. We're all near death. Well, I can some sleep. Some near death. Oh, <laughs> the party's got gross faces. What's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just here with my, like, perfect hair. Yeah. Don't, don't psychoanalyze me too deeply. It would scare me, too. <laughs> so, are you setting up camp, then, essentially, for the yeah, evening? It sounds yeah. like we might be. Okay. I'll get uh, my last remaining tiny servant to uh, patrol the hallway. Okay, which one is this? The candle. Okay. There's the the sort of weirdly comforting comical vision of the of the candle kind of walking back and forth, probably head aflame. That's kind of a little bit of light, a little bit of light, a little bit of light going back and forth across the door. Actually, I don't think it's lit. If I do that, it starts taking damage. So. Oh, geez. Does it really? <laughs> well. It's it would. A, it's now on fire. I suppose. If it's not as natural, uh, it's just sort of a natural feature well, of a plus candle. Can, well, yeah, candles burn up when you light them. So. True, true. These are um, mystical creatures. I wouldn't... We're, I wouldn't, also, uh, in a, we're also in a time-variant place, too. Uh -huh. yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have the candle immolated by its own flame. That seems <laughs> kind of counter-interesting. Counter, uh, so, um, In any case, are you taking watches, or are you just going to... Watch. I'm going to bed. I'll okay. take a double one. Mm -hmm. Is yeah, there like a footrest at the bottom of the slanted table? There is actually, because that's where that's how the person stands stood up. So, it's like, okay. so if you want to do the oh man, Babylon Five, uh, mm -hmm. the Minbari had slanted tables like that. Because like I, it's like just kind of wants to sleep on the slanted table, but it's like first he's just gonna put his hand next to the restraints that are open to see mm -hmm. if they snap shut snap shut automatically. They do not. Okay. Yeah, I'll just rest on the slanted table. Okay. Um. Who's taking first watch? Clark will. Okay. How do you determine when your watch is done? It waits for someone else to take it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same way we've second. done this the past. Okay. Like half no, that's fair. Times, so. That's fair. Um, yeah, we just estimate it. Okay. Make a perception check. Sure. 
Here comes the perceiving. Or not. Uh, 14. 14, okay. About halfway through, you uh, guesstimate um, your, your watch, you do hear first a couple of small clunk, 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 clunk of smaller rocks, and then a crash of a number of additional rocks being added to the pile. Jenga. Uh, then it kind of goes quiet for a while. And you're kind of standing there going, so they were being subtle about it, then they kind of did something, and then it was quiet, so they probably didn't mean to do that exactly, mm. or there's such urgency now that they're they're scared of it. Mm. Beyond that, unless you go to investigate. You won't leave the room. Okay. Um, who's next watch? Uh, I would be. Um, and well, Clog will pass the news on. They're, they're picking up the pace. I want to help me mess with Zacchaeus. Hmm? What? <laughs> I watched him <laughs> go make sure it didn't automatically oh, yeah. close on his arm. It, it doesn't seem to react to to him at all. Uh, um, and he's fast asleep, I think, because you're also out of his dice and a bunch of other yeah. things. So, <laughs> yeah. um, well, not exhausted. He seems like quite danger. quite serenely sleeping. Um, the uh, right side of his face may be a little more relaxed than the left. I'll leave that to you. No, no part his right eye is still open yet, okay. around. Not yet. Not where we're, while we're in hell. Fair. Fair. Spells. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I won't mess with him. I want to, though. I keep in mind. I've heard nothing. It's probably for the best. <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, I'll keep uh, two shifts. Cause As you're kind of looking at him and smirking, you do notice that, that gray-white hand go up and kind of scratch underneath the eye a little bit and then goes back down. Doesn't seem like he woke up. Is the eye closed? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go up to it and just poke it. Poke his eye? Uh, no, <laughs> his arm. <laughs> it feels very soft and clammy to the touch. Um, it's Does not... it react to being poked? Doesn't seem to. Okay. I go back and sit down in front of the door. Okay. Sketch it. <laughs> As you sit and kind of, I'm assuming, sort of sit cross legged, yeah. relaxing a little bit. You see the candle once more, kind of walking back and forth. Does that long last the entire night, or it's the they last a day? Okay. So I'm assuming it's effectively lasting until we wake okay. up again. So. Make a perception check on your your watch. Another nine. Uh, so fourteen. Fourteen. Or six. Uh, sorry, seventeen. Because nine plus eight is seventeen. Okay. On the very edge of your hearing, you do once again kind of like what most of you have gotten used to hearing now and are aware of. Once you're all quiet, you kind of are aware of the small addition of stones being added to that pile. There's something else. You can again very barely make out that sound of, of, uh, of the, the rushing of, of water. But you also make out a voice. You can't make out any words at all, but it sounds as though there's a voice. Um, make an inside check as you hear this. Is it that like... uh, dirty 20. Okay. Um, there's, again, no words, but the tone goes from angry to laughing to resigned kind of flows around those continuously. You only hear it for a second or two uh, and then it's quiet and then there are more stones and about an hour later you hear kind of an angry uh, uh, very faint uh, sound of that voice again. And then the rest of it is quiet. That's both my shifts? That's, yeah, yeah your two shifts. Cool. Next. Yeah, I'll take the last one. Okay. I'll go back. Do you uh, tell Kujima what you've heard or seen? I do. Um, I also bring up that that arm is messed up. Mm-hmm. It's acting on its own. No, it's not. Gotcha. I'm like, in my dream, like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's only talking out of the right side of his mouth somehow. <laughs> The hand just turns and flips you the bird. That's what I was thinking too, actually, but no. It was only in my mind. 
All right. Okay. Mm, I go and dip my other two hours. When you resume your shift or start your shift, mm -hmm. uh, the candlestick stick, uh, walks over and kind of does a salute and a bow to you uh, before resuming on its its uh, watch uh, as well. Make Bye. a salute it back. Make a perception check uh, for your turn. Seventeen. Seventeen. Um, having been told about the voice, you're kind of on edge waiting for it. What do you do to pass the time? Anything in particular? I'm looking at the foot manacles on Zacchaeus's bed. Okay. Um, there's plenty of time to look at them closely, so it doesn't really require a roll um, if you want to take a look at them. Uh, they're not entirely dissimilar to the one around your own leg, except yours is made of stone. Or yours is made of metal, rather, than this is mm -hmm. made of stone. Um, there were adjustments made where metal is allowed to move a little more smoothly over it, where stone on stone doesn't move very smoothly. Um, looking at it, though, it was fashioned and kind of constructed that way, constructed to be smoother. So a lot of care was taken in to make sure that these were going to move smoothly. And also the interior of the, the cuff uh, is very, very smooth, uh, as if that's been uh, very carefully done as well. And on the interior, you actually pick out just a tiny little bit of what was probably like a leather or more than likely, as it sort of dissolves in your hands, probably hair that was used to pad the inside. So mm. care was taken to make sure this would not hurt. Okay. Is either Zacchaeus' legs close to the manacle? Oh yeah, inside? yeah. His his legs are right at the bottom. Okay. He's basically leaning back, like like it's a forklift, <laughs> like a, a, a <laughs> leg, kind of leaning back on it. Well, I can't reach his arm to manacle it, so not from here. You'd have I'm to go up to the actual arm ones. Well, yeah, I'm also only two foot three, yeah. so I doubt I can reach them um, without climbing Zacchaeus. Um, I'm going to just gently move his foot over. Okay. I'll have you make a sleight of hand. Are, it shouldn't make noise. I'll have though. you have a sleight of hand. I'll have you make a perception check with this advantage. Two. Just because I'm also interested in this while I was awake. So two. No. <laughs> Four. I'm assuming she's awake right now. Like I was sleeping during your your yeah. patrol, yeah. but uh, I mean well, you're in your I'm meditation. Assuming, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're just so meditating. You're, so. you're vaguely aware that Kuzima's first of all been looking and poking around at things, and then sort of like <laughs> like a lot of like a lot of cats. It's I, I get this impression. It's like a lot of cats who will just knock things off for no reason. I feel it's almost like that. Yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm mischaracterizing it, but if for some reason that came to my no, mind. No, he's just cats thinking if something goes wrong with Zach, is he wants them bolted to the table okay. as much as possible. So what was your sleight of hand? Go wrong. I got a natural twenty for twenty six total. <laughs> wow. I'm actually not skilled in sleight of hand. I got a four because yeah. I'm fucking tired and all. So yeah, that. you you're you're out of it. Um, <laughs> what is Zach's dream? What would it, what would a dream that we'd be trying to focus on right now feel like? Being at the library. Okay, surrounded by the comfortable books. At my desk, doing my old job. Probably there's the, like something in the back of my mind, like something I'm missing. And the inswelling of that wonderful smell of books surrounding yeah. you and kind of the comfort of home. Prina comes over and hugs his ankle tight. <laughs> I haven't seen Prina for a while, actually. Hey, Prina. Um, Hi. Uh, she's, Wait. No, she's Wait. probably asking Kuzan what, he, what he's doing. To, I'm playing a trick on Zarkis. Oh, I'll oh, get the other leg. No, Prina, Prina has not been seen for a while. Yeah. It's actually a little concerning. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you easily you easily smooth, move it over, and again, it's made to be moved smoothly and, and mm. carefully. It, it you have to adjust his leg slightly to make sure it's in the right position because mm -hmm. they would be okay, slightly. Doing it slightly. Slowly, yeah. But yeah, no problem. Easily done, and then you put you put the peg on it. Uh, peg goes in quite quite nicely, holding it very firmly closed. Um, okay. It's, it's Azura not, smiles. <laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't have a lot of adjustment, but you are able mm -hmm. to make sure that it would not slip over his ankle very easily. Um, and then I'll go. Just patrolling around. He'll go up and check the floor above us, come back down the stairs, okay. go check on the rocks, come back up. Um, going upstairs, there's no difference whatsoever. It's as timeless and unchanged as it probably has been for centuries. Uh, going downstairs, you do notice that additional rocks have been added to the pile. And the part where you'd kind of only partially noted it before, and then Clark had noted it more specifically uh, last time he was down there, there was a bit of an opening at the top. It looks as though smaller stones have been shoved into that part. You also see one large stone, which is at the foot of the pile, 
which is probably, uh, as probably was handed off to person to person to person, the larger crash that uh, Clark mm. had heard. Um, and there's a chunk, a visible chunk taken out of the wall now. Whereas before, you hadn't even really noticed any pockmarks in the wall. He's going to... He's going to ask them why they're doing this. He'll do it in common, deep speech, draconic, and undercommon. Okay. Um, just in case any of them... calling out. Stuff. How loudly are you calling out? Uh, just kind of talking level at the bottom of the stairs. Okay. He's not being too loud about it, because people... <laughs> why are you like this? <laughs> Make a perception check. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, you call out in these these multiple languages, um, trying to kind of gain the attention. Probably staring at the wall, because that's where you'd seen the actual hand come out of. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't seem to be any reaction to that, but on the edge of your hearing, you hear from here a faint female voice saying, "Who's there? Who's there?" but it's faint and muffled and definitely behind the, the, the wall of rocks. Hmm. Hmm. I, am a sm I am a small kobold. Who are you? And are you kind of shouting that out? or Not shouting, but saying it a, just loud enough that she's just on the other side she could hear it. Kind of the same volume she's using. You hear the ret response kind of louder um, and filled with a little bit more hope I'm trapped help me hi trapped um, who she's are speaking you? in common okay um, I'll occasionally change it to under common or deep speech to see what her reaction is in case perhaps she happens to speak one of those and responds in kind without thinking okay um, that's it who are you and why are you here? Um, make a persuasion check as you're trying to kind of trap her and... and... 18. Okay. Um, the answers always come back in common, no matter what language you're using. Um, the answers are pretty much the same. Um, growing more and more insistent, please help me, I've been trapped in here for so long. So if I say something in deep speech, she responds as though she got it, but in common. It's more of uh, there's or a she's, res she's response the taking saying the same thing no matter okay. what you're saying. It's probably probable that she can't really hear you all that clearly. I'll speak a bit louder if that seems to be the case. Okay. Say, what is your name? Heather. I've been here for so long. Are, are, are you with him? With who? Uh, the bad man. Emerald. Is that his name? I don't know. I don't know who he is. Make an insight check. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Ten. Ten? Obviously confused and scared by the emotions you're getting off of this. Mm. There's a bit of hope as well as if finally... Could you describe him? What? Just come get me out of here. I am a tiny kobold. I can't move these rocks. Oh. Well, can you get help? Possibly, but I need to know more. I don't remember. I haven't seen him in a long time. He's an elf. Tall. Scary. Oh, <laughs> How many arms did he have? Like that. Two. What? What kind of a question is that? A Two. One. I will see what we can do. Wait, at least tell me your name. Hmm. You can put, call me Ironbound. It's a strange name. But yes. I'm happy to have met you? Please, if you can help. Why are these stone creatures blocking you in? I don't know. I haven't been able to see them from where I am. Why didn't... Were you locked in before they started throwing rocks in the 
Is that what they're doing? I've heard a lot of noise. Is there a door down there? Uh, how, are, how are you held there? Are you locked in? Are it's a cell. Mm. Once my uh, friends are here, we will see about uh, digging there, down. There are more of you. More cobalts? No. Oh, good. I mean, I hope you can help. We will try. Please rest until then. I'll try. And then I'll head back up. Finish my uh, my uh, shift. So he's just gonna wait until like the actual time is up for the much needs anybody. Yeah, once people start to wake up. I mean, from what I've seen of the uh, well, I mean, from what I know of being a caster and seeing the other casters, they need their sleep. If I wake them up too soon, they ain't got no magic and they're useless. Uh, we're probably going to need magic cranky. soon. Okay. Before well, one of gonna be cranky when he wakes up with his foot no <laughs> Before uh, they start to rouse, um, you see your, your candlestick walk in front of you, once again salute and then bow, and then shift back down to just being a candlestick. Yeah, I thank it and I put it back with the others. And um, apparently we're losing people. Uh, apparently that side of the table is good not to address for the last few minutes. Um, what does Clark dream of? What would be a dream that Clark would go to at a moment like this? Um, I would imagine whatever dream he had would be colored by the voices of the glaive. Okay. Um, just because. So let's start with what it would have been. He probably would have been thinking about life back home and time with the military and time with the guild and, uh, brief but unsatisfying me meetings with his father memories of his mother okay um, hanging out with his sister wondering what she's up to that sort of thing as you drift through most of these memories um, as you suggested there is seemingly some influence um, as you turn to a colleague and his face goes slack and pale and almost misty and then there's a sort of half screaming face behind it which emerges but then you move on to another memory and trying to you've, your mind is kind of mentally moving through all of these um, make a wisdom saving throw sure which is to say uh, 19 Whoa. okay keep that dice forever um you kind of instinctively look for memories which are calming and comfortable. And it seems like these manifestations come less when there's less memories of conflict or people who were in conflict. Um, until you find yourself uh, back in Vitor, strangely enough. Okay. Uh, talking to... Uh, wow, I'm forgetting names. This is not good. The little wizard guy. Uh, Bozo. Bozo. Bozo the, Bozo the, sage. the sage. That's what I was trying to think of. Um, you're sitting inside one of the many um, pubs which he frequents as a blazing fire and there's sort of a, a crowd around you but somewhat indistinct um, and Bozo is, is uh, just coming off of the, the table that he's using as a stage for that particular moment mm -hmm. and sees you and kind of walks over climbs up onto one of the chairs and motions and drinks are brought over I have a question before he speaks okay does the glaive find itself into the dreams? Is it a physical thing? Or is it just sort of... Do you go looking for it? Not specifically. Okay. Then you do not see it. Okay. Um, you're looking sour tonight. Yeah, I'm always sour. Fair enough. Fair enough. You don't do enough work. That's what's problem. I've got to put you to work more and more. Sure. What's the job? Saving the world? How does that sound for starters? I think I'm already doing that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, maybe I could have you do it a little bit faster. No, speed isn't the problem. Hmm. You know I need contacts in all kinds of places. Yeah. So if you can find me a good contact on your um, daytime job, that'd be helpful to me. Clark will look around, 
see what the, what the attitude of the bar is? It is almost as though the rest of the bar is wrapped in cellophane and and yeah, and foggy and distant and yeah, it's it's though none of that seems real. But here in this particular moment, Bazo seems real. I'll see what I can do. Well, that's all anybody could ask for, really. After all, you're part of the family now. And he kind of takes his drink, and you notice on his finger is a ring which sort of glints weirdly in the light. Uh, and on it is the symbol which you've seen a number of times before, mm -hmm. the symbol of Marius on the ring. But you'd never noticed it on Bozo's finger before. Ah, if you'll excuse me, I think there's someone who needs my attention. And he kind of hops off the chair and you see him walk off into the crowd. And while the crowd is indistinct, he still seems to remain distinct. And he goes down and sits down at another table. And a woman, an elven woman, is sitting there. And she's looking regal and fantastic. And you do recognize in that instant, this may be the living vision of the queen you had seen before. Okay. And then that also goes indistinct and fades out as you continue to snore in the okay. corner. The time passes. The two elves find yourselves coming out of your trance, feeling somewhat rested. It was a long rest, so please make the adjustments there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you kind of stretch a little bit, or move to stretch a little bit, Zakis, and yep. find your right foot somewhat stuck. <sighs> down to see that the one of the cuffs has been put yeah. carefully. It was only one foot you were doing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I do warn him before he goes standing up. I just I just kind of like roll my eyes up and do it. Yeah, it, <laughs> because your hands aren't bound, it's yeah. not too hard. You saw close up what the mechanism was, and it's not hard to pull the pin, essentially, which, which uh, holds that cuff closed. Um, you do notice, though, looking closer now... I'm pretty sure it's Elzara who did it, though. Uh, <laughs> Even though she did. It's entirely possible. <laughs> No, you I'm, have no I'm, proof. The one, I'm the one that warned you. <laughs> yeah. you. You have no proof that it was me who did your office either, because yeah, I rolled true. a nat 20 <laughs> on <true>. that. <laughs> you cannot prove anything. Why does everybody roll nat 20 on like 20 <laughs> <laughs> It's a meme. It's a meme. Uh, so you all are all awake, refreshed. Um, Radix uh, uh, comes skittering around the corner. She wasn't in the room for much, but you didn't really see her. Uh, she had gone upstairs somewhere and kind of maybe found her own hiding hole just in case. Um, um, okay, the bonus 10 hit points uh, go would go away. It goes away after one day. Long rest. What about uh, the penalty maximum hit points that the two of us have? Uh, yeah. That's a good oh, right. question. Uh, some of them end after a long rest, some yeah. of them are different. Uh, what was the. No. Red mine is eight, I think. Now I have to what remember what that ten? was. I think that was a right here. We'll look at under this one. Alright. So I kinda of wish it was listed as screaming heebie jeebies, that'd be a lot easier to find. Alright. Uh so that's okay. for that theories. Or a band from the 60s. Oh, yeah. Ah, that is gone after the target takes a long rest. Woo! Okay, so the hit point maximums go go away. I was pretty sure, but I wanted to make sure that it wasn't. I wasn't giving them too easy a, uh, a shrug off. Well, I snap, crackle, pop. I take it there where it goes. Uh, yeah, your right arm does not snap, crackle, or pop. My back did though. Your back did. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I bound your leg because I couldn't reach your arm. Oh, I thought that was also that arm was moving on its own. Why would you think that? What? Why would you think I've that? I've only known you for a week, and I would think that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, your arm was moving on its own. Okay. That was a little creepy, so I figured I'd keep you a little closer under control. Was it slipping, slapping me in the face, or no? It Doing unclean things? That I don't know. Ooh, From what you saw, it? I literally just, scra just scratched his cheek as if... I didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> what you saw, anyway. Um, 
secretly, I'm kind of disappointed in Elsa for not doing the prank. <laughs> but I, I say this now. But that now the universe will respond in kind. <laughs> she doesn't have her brother there to talk her out of trouble. She it's tends true. to not do stuff when that's not there. Fair enough. Uh, out of vision. Oh. Well, that's it. <laughs> oh. That is all. Um, so I guess goes oh and then waits. I think and waits. Uh, Her Majesty is sold. Uh, dealt with uh, Marius. Okay. In the past, personally. What did the division involve? That. Queen is old. Dealt with Marius. Okay. Yeah. I'll keep that in mind. Hopefully, it's information we can use. I don't know anybody who's dealt with Marius personally. Personally, as in the god came down to visit her? Don't know. That's my inclination. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Clark will armor up and weapon up and clean up. and. There's a, a weird sense. I mean, you, you slept in the shadow for a few days now, but... Even despite that, and maybe because it's been a few days, and none of you have stopped to have a bite to eat or a drink. And this morning, for whatever reason, you don't feel hungry or thirsty. It's more like the craving of something familiar. You know, you, you want to have drank something, but you're not particularly thirsty. It, it's like your routines are sliding away. A sense of time slipping away. Radix does not seem to have the same sort of issue. She awakes and actually looks a little more cheery than she did before. Almost as though she shook something off in the night. So, we're going down, right? Yes. Have there been any, any developments with the rock monsters or the pile? No, but there appears to be a young lady on the other side of the rocks. What? Mm. There is? Yes, uh, called herself Heather. Do I recognize that name? Maybe a trap. I don't know. You've Pretty probably met a few Heathers, but it doesn't seem to stand out in your mind. Okay. <laughs> Alright, well... Onwards? Downwards? Um, I take a minute and cast a Tiny Servant. Okay. At level 5, so I animate five candles, a hammer, and a hatchet. <laughs> okay. A toolkit comes alive at... Uh, at Kazima's feet. What are the rest of you doing? Mm -hmm. Picking up my stuff, getting ready to go. Okay, easily done. So you're heading downstairs? Clark's gonna move his uh, lucky coin to a pocket that's close to, close at hand. Okay. Instead I'm going I'm going to pick up my moving friend and just look at her for a little bit. Are you going to concentrate or uh, attune to that now? I'm or? already attuned to it. Okay, I thought you'd left that one behind. No, because she... she made me she there was a thing that she felt worried that I was attuning okay. to her um how are you holding it um like under the armpits okay like. it doesn't move but there's a weird sense of it hugging your hands as you hold it there lovingly you look at the coin as you transfer one pocket to another mm -hmm. both sides are the same what do they read treasure. Hmm. Clark will flip it. Okay. Either way, we get treasure. Dragon. It's treasure. Interesting. Um, you have one point of luck for the day. Okay. You know how luck works? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll look it up anyway. <laughs> You'll look it up. <laughs> look it up. Basically, right. you, you can either re-roll a roll or you can make him re-roll a roll. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you do have to take the second roll, though. Yeah. It's not like advantage. Yeah. All right. Um, how are we proceeding downward? It's really only room enough for, well, Kujima can be beside anybody, but for the most of you, it's it's little too tight to have two by side by um, each. I can have the tiny chain gang move all the rocks out of the way while you guys have breakfast. The Glumpkins might attack us if we try to 
move the pile. Even with the number of things that you have there, it's still going to take hours for them to make a dent in that pile. I can. Okay, I thought you said it was only a, a small thing blocking our... When they looked before. But every time you guys have gone back, there are additional rocks been added, and even that small part that was a, a gap in the in the ceiling has, has been gone now. Um, okay. So it will take them quite a while if they're the only ones doing it. Well, lens we, awesome. I mean, it's a hallway. We can only have one person or a group of small things working at a time. So True. If we're not doing that, then you guys pick however you want to do it. Clark will take the first shift. I'll follow Clark and uh, say to no wall in particular in Primordial, we're not here to fight. Okay. Can you show yourselves? Communicate with us? Make a persuasion check. Eleven. Okay. So as you're going down this uh, this hallway, and I guess you're going yeah. to with the intent of clearing yeah. down these rocks, uh, you look down, and again, more rocks have been added in the evening. Mm -hmm. um, and you hear behind you the strange guttural uh, sound of, of Zakaz's voice in a language you don't have any clue. Well, you've heard it a couple of times, but it still sounds like someone gargling uh, soil uh, with a side of marbles. <laughs> uh, and there's no response. Okay. You start to chip away at the wall. Yeah. Okay. It's, How? It's, what's your approach? Uh, one third pull and two thirds push. So for every one third of work done to to clear the front, it's also to push the top and try to make a a, a tunnel basically. Okay. If you can make a small tunnel like it. That's that's the through. intent. Is it? Because okay. once you've got an opening, then it's much easier. Even an opening this big is useful. Uh, I will let Clark know that. <laughs> okay. Um, you notice that there's a large stone that has been placed at the bottom of this okay. uh, that clearly came out of the wall. You can actually see the chunk of the wall which is missing. Okay. Um, and uh, it, it makes it a little awkward, oddly enough, uh, to kind of get any of the stones out because it's literally in the way um, as another further impediment. But make a strength roll. We'll see how sure. long this takes you to start start pulling away these rocks. Uh, six. Six? Yeah, it's hard to kind of do because every time you step on one rock, it's such a loose pile that you're a little awkward and kind of jamming it out. But you, you know, after about an hour, you started to make a neat little pile in the hallway. Uh, are you specifically aiming to create a, a gap at the top? To or? start with, and okay. then the idea is to tunnel um, down it. As soon as okay. I see the gap, I'm going to cast Arcane Eye. Okay, and after about an hour, there is a small gap at the at the top. Targo probably took um, a short, a short pause to catch his breath. And okay. Um, you do hear the sound of a female voice on the other side. Hello? Is that you, uh, Ironbound? It's in common. Hmm? No, it's Ironbound's friends. Although he's here somewhere as well. Oh, you've, you've come. Oh, good. How are you getting through? Where are you? We're What's going on? in the process of figuring that out. Uh, do you know why... The monsters or the Zorans are preventing us from accessing you. I don't know. I can't see anything from here. From where? Inside this cage. Who are you? Rescuers, apparently. We look forward to making to meeting your acquaintance, but uh in the meantime My name is Heather. Okay. Hello, Heather. Is that name ring any bells? Make a history check. Not with a three. No, afraid not. Am I making a history check too or no? Because I know I, I've met a few others. Sure. Okay. Sure. It's the fourth one. Seven. History, you know, that's more than seven. H, these are in alphabetical order. Oh, plus ten, so it's seventeen. Seventeen? <laughs> I read I mean, books. There are a lot of Heathers in those books. You've met a few. There was a shopkeeper once, and uh, you know somebody who uh, worked for your parents was named Heather. You think, or maybe Henrietta? It's not really sure. Okay. It wasn't really important. You were going to cast Arcane Eye. Yeah, and okay. send it through the opening. Okay. Because because Emma said that it might be a trap, so. I mean, at this point, isn't everything a trap? Yeah, probably. Um, I'll look up the particulars of this. 
Okay. So yes, the little sensor appears. Um, it is a little bit disconcerting because I think your dark vision is better than its. I think your dark vision is 60 feet. It only has 30 feet. Okay. So there's no, there's no light on the other side. Um, yeah. yeah, it pops through the, the top of it, no problem. You see on the other side uh, the pile, um, which is a pile on both sides. It's not just on this side. They actually look like they've been piling on both sides mm -hmm. of it all. Um, so at this point, it's almost eight feet deep um, at the, its deepest on the bottom, but only a couple of feet at the top, and now there's this gap. Um, you push the little sensor through. Mm -hmm. um, you see the same sort of layout, the circular uh, building, this hallway, and as you come around to the front, and we'll use this, the middle one as the, as the model for this, there is that normal gap you've seen, but this time it is actually covered with a metal grate. Uh, and on the inside, you see uh, a woman, okay. dressed in rags, um, got a hood kind of half over her, uh, her her head, and she seems to be. Uh, uh, actually, sorry, she would be close up to the gates at this point, looking to try to make sense of what's going on. Okay, can I tell what race she is? Elf, human, half elf. Um, she's mostly covered, humanoid of some kind, probably elven or half elf or human, about that size. Um, but you can't see her ears, and there's nothing particular in the, the, the part of her skin that you do see um, that makes a difference. How did you end up here? I was taken. Taken how? From, and where were you from originally? This is where Mark forgets the names of things and has to look something up. Uh, loading. Loading. Yeah, please, please wait. <laughs> Universe is still loading. Graphics can't handle this. You weren't supposed to be in this area yet. <laughs> there's only facade. Um, no, I just forgot. I'd like to make out it was much more important, but no, I just forgot. Uh, the shadow. I was living in Withergate, and then this person appeared and had an offer. It's better than what I was doing, which was not much at all. Which person and what was the offer? It was the, the, the bad man. I don't know his name. He said something about experiments, about maybe going home. Okay. Are you near? Yes, near-ish. There is a large pile of rocks separating us from your cell. That's weird. Yes. Why is that there? I heard all the noise. I, I didn't know what was going on. There are creatures who are separate from the rock, but within, live within the rock at the same time. They've been preventing Glomkins. us from... Glomkins? Yes. Yeah. Where did you learn that term? Uh, he said it. Vrinwick? Who? Vrinwick. I don't know who that is. Short, had crystals embedded in his No, skin. no, 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 the elf. Was he tall? And I'll describe him real... Um, that sounds like him. Okay, and he's the, the bad man you're, you're referring to? Yeah, I never, I never really learned his name. Okay. The other one you said, what was his name? Vrinwick. He said he was short? Short, had gems embedded in his skin. I might have he, seen he him. He was a halfling. It's been a long time, Supposedly though. he escaped. Actually, no, we know he escaped. That means there is a way out. Yes. The madman wasn't lying. No, he certainly was not lying. What kind of experiments was, was he referring to? Um, you see a, a, a... Make an insight check, actually. Hey, my first good roll with this dice. It's a 15, or 18 plus... I believe that's... 5. 23. Okay. With the arcane eye, you're watching her as she reacts to this conversation and shouting out the windows, um, kind of moving up to the to the bars and and clawing on them. Um, but while her voice is concerned and uh, a, a bit scared and a bit confused, um, the expression on her face is something entirely different. Mm -hmm. The expression on her face is frustration. As in, and she grabs the, the bars and you can see her tightening her, her uh, uh, actually, one hand, only the, only the right hand grabs the bars, the other one's still inside of her cloak, and you can see her knuckles whitening on the, on the bar in clear frustration. 
as in, uh, and every time you ask one of these questions, there's sort of a rolling of, of the eyes. And again, only you can only really see the right side of her face. The rest is still in shadow of the, of the, uh, of the, the, the cloak. Uh, and at one point she, she, um, she just sort of backs away and you can see the frustration on her face uh, as the hood falls back. Oh yeah. And you see that the left hand side of her face is nothing but more than a skeleton. Okay. Uh, with a small glowing uh, greenish gem where the left eyeball would be. Um, she quickly rearranges it and you see her with her left hand kind of rearrange as well and you can see that her left hand is in fact missing. It is the end of a skeletal arm that at least as far as you can tell is skeleton all the way up to the elbow and her hand is missing. Okay. And it quickly she quickly rearranges the, the, the cloak as well. Are you are you going to be through soon? I uh, want to leave this place. We want well, we want to leave this place too. So uh, we can uh, possibly work together as soon as we clear the pile of rubble. So um, I'm just gonna help my friends, and I'll get back to that. Good. And we can communicate through this a little bit. It's been so long. I I guess I can wait a little longer. Thank you. No problem. And yeah, you see her back down, back in the back, and just sort of sit down and, and sort of slump down against the wall. We look forward to meeting you. I look forward to meeting you too. I'll leave the Ark and I open okay. because, well, A, hey, it lasts an hour and B, mm -hmm. like I want to see what else is in the room. Okay. As you look around, there is nothing else in the room. Literally nothing else in the room except for a little bit of hair. Um, you can see the hair has been kind of gathered up in almost a bedroll type thing. Good. And even that, a lot of it looks like it's broken away and brittle and just just uh, fallen away over the, over the years. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to like park the uh, Ark and I close to the pile. So if there are, if any Glopkins come back up to form the pile on that side, I can see Okay. Them. You see her kind of uh, look up for a moment mm -hmm. and then pull back the uh, the uh, hood, revealing that eye, which flashes suddenly. And then uh, you see her push the, the hood back over and there's a little bit of motion. You don't hear anything, but it's almost like a laugh is the way the body motion seems to be. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Did she see the arcane eye, though? Or? You have no idea. Okay. She looked in that direction, though, and something magical happened. Good to know. Meanwhile, outside... Question. Yep. It's a trap. We've got a, we've got a hole that we can at least see through. Mm -hmm. Do not have to get a couple hands in there? Yeah, and in fact, the small servants can definitely move through, too. If it's that big, I can get through it. Um, it's a little smaller than that. Um, it's basically... he go, he'll, As soon as the arcane eye was only about a hole about that big... And then you continue to move more away, and it's about that big at this point. So the tiny servants can easily make it through. I think you're too small for that, but it's not far. With a little bit of effort, okay. you can yeah, no, push down to it. What, no sense sending the servants through. What do I know about that type of creature? Like what type of creature? Whatever I was just imprison, talking to. Imprisoned elf. Skeleton, half skeleton elf. <laughs> I mean, you think of it and go. How dangerous is it going to be? Doesn't one? look much worse than I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say just that further that. on. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly, but um, I'll. This place is very strange, and there are all kinds of weird things about death here. Weird ass shit. <laughs> um, Who is the closest to me right now? Um, probably Clark. Clark. Hmm? Probably Clark. Okay, I'll just tap Clark on the shoulder. Yes. Whispering. Uh, actually, I'll get him to like come up to the room with me. Okay. Just in case we're overheard by. Whatever. So you're backing up. Yeah. Okay. Taking a break. Uh, yeah. Um, the arcane eye I sent through. She says her name's Heather, and she looks like an elf, maybe? Okay. But half of her is a skeleton with a green gem for an eye, so Kuzama was right in saying this is a trap. Okay. She was also very frustrated when I was asking questions, but I mean, that, that, that can happen, because sometimes it happens when it's not undead still, but... Uh, you should tell your companions. Yes, we should. Maybe quietly. We, I'm gonna continue digging. Yes. So, I, I will tell the rest of my companions quietly okay. and in the other room. I, I guess I presume that everybody else wasn't yeah. there, or are you actually there? I mean, that's that's up to you guys. It's a small, crowded hallway, so I'm not going to yeah. be there. Okay, not that's fair. That's, that's fair. Until I break through. And there hasn't been any immediate threat. I'd be there, sitting so. in the stairs. Okay. A little higher up. Yeah. So, Clark, you'll run into uh, Elzara first, then. I'll move the eye to the other corner of the room. What other corner of the room? You right, need, circular need, room. Her, yeah, did, did you? Are you taking it through into the room? No, I'm just moving it to see if the skeleton's eye follows. Okay. Um, doesn't seem to be any reaction. Okay. Are you moving it into the room though, or are you going to just leave it in the hallway? 
No, it was like in the room, just it, but it had the pile in view, the pile of rocks in view. So that's around the corner. Okay. But did you move the eye and then move push it inward into where she is, or just look from the door? Yeah, I'll just push it inwards. Okay. And then back out. It just dissipates as soon as it hits the uh, the metal gates. The spell in, is over. I mean, uh, the eye dissipates as soon as it hits the, the room? Or as like, soon as it crosses the threshold of that inner room, it dissipates. Okay, so as soon as it crosses the threshold of, like, the cage where she's in. That's right. Okay, gotcha. Specifically, the one entrance is there. It goes in here away. and it hits yeah. here and goes poof. You okay. don't have any chance to see anything because it dissipates instantly, gotcha. but you're pretty sure that it just walked into a either a trap or a field intended to prevent magic from passing through. Okay, I'll relay this information to my companions as well. Okay, well, they're right, sure. they're right there. Okay. <laughs> Very quietly. Okay, so you gather up uh, Elzera, Radix, and... I uh, like this plan. <laughs> Sorry? I don't like this plan. But now we know it was something about... And yeah, uh, it's either a trap or some magically warded area. What are you focusing on? Are you going to make the hole bigger, or are you just going to continue well, to pull away the hole? Here's my genius plan. Uh-oh. Uh, I would... Okay. <clears throat> If I use a charge on the glaive, okay, I get to add plus three attack and damage for one minute. Okay. So the idea is, is to spend a charge to get that benefit. Okay. Sheath the glaive. Put two hands under the lip of the door, the top of the door, and then two feet underneath. Well, there's no there's no door here. It's, it's just a pile of well, stones. Well, there's a, there's a there's a there's an arch. Yes. And then a pile of rocks. Yeah. Okay. The idea is grab the top of the arch. Mm-hmm. Use his entire body, legs, arms, everything, to push the top of the pile of the rocks into the okay. room. Okay. Okay. Yep. Instead of using arms or legs, use the yep. whole body. Use the whole body. And okay. do that for a minute. Okay. <laughs> Just over and over and over again. Um, That's the plan. Let's have an athletics roll. Sure. Uh, and I'll give you advantage because you basically are juiced oh, up right now. Excellent. Juiced. Even 20. Okay. Dirty. So as uh, you start to talk amongst each other and Elzara is whispering, I hate this plan, I hate this plan, and Radix just seems to be a bit confused about all of this, um, you hear this sudden tumbling of stones from down, down below you, and then it's followed by another tumbling of stones. And uh, apparently Clark works much better when unobserved. Uh, it's like a lot of superheroes whose powers are only available to them when no one can see them doing anything. But he sounds like he's uh, pulling down the wall single-handedly. Is he okay? Should we go check? You, you hear like somewhat like the, the modern day equivalent of someone using a rowing machine for the last hour. <laughs> it's a lot of like. <laughs> I'll go down and check. Oh, well, by the way, I, I the, forgot. Uh, I, I was too busy thinking about Heather and how to. Anyway, I, I forgot. Uh, if you want to put some rocks, I can summon a disc to take the rocks away. Clark's too busy in his, in his efforts, I believe. Yeah, well, you were upstairs anyway explaining to them. This only lasts a minute, so literally by the time you're finished explaining, he's done. Um, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, make a perception check. Sure. Nineteen. Colored only or? Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, that's close, but not enough. All right. Uh, as you're pushing away, and you've made a pretty significant dent. In fact, although crawling or perhaps uh, uh, at least bending over, people could make it over. The stone is pretty loose here somewhere. Okay. Uh, as a strike comes from outside, from the wall. Ah, as well, you see the large three-handed uh, claw, about the size of your chest, swing through. And none of them have been described that large before. Uh, does a 23 hit your Most AC? Most definitely. All right. By AC of 13, yes. All right. Uh, you take 12 points of slashing damage. Okay. There's a second one, which, because you're standing on these loose stones, you're actually pushed back a bit, and the thing goes right on by you. Okay. Uh, and a third one, which is a 16. Uh, that'll hit. Um, as you see, these large claws kind of spin out of the, oof, for 13 points of slashing damage. Okay. Spin out of the wall, uh, and then move back in. 
Did I see this happen? As no, was... you guys are upstairs. Okay. This is all while Clark was doing his, uh, wow, his okay. damnedest on the wall. I'm sitting in the stairway. Uh, he gathered you to go talk to him as well, or close to it anyway. Okay. You will hear all of this happening pretty quickly. And presume at this point you have explained what you've seen yeah. so far. And the frustration, and she's just waiting for us to like, fall into the trap, I guess. So, crash, bang, rocks are moving, and then... Do you make any sound probably, when you get yeah, Probably, yeah, <laughs> probably. <noise>. How? <laughs> kind yeah. of thing happening from down below you. That is Clark's spine going. I'm going to go check on him. Lumpkins. I'll follow. I'll I don't follow. think Lumpkins. Mm -hmm. I'll say Lumpkins. <laughs> my uh, assumption is his back is gone. <laughs> you hurry down. You don't see any other sign of them. Okay. Um, in a way, actually make a survival check. Sure. Let's do it that way. I like, the, I like survival checks. 19. 19. Um, there was a, a way that that almost felt like um, a, a wild animal defending its den or someone getting frustrated that its work has been undone mm. because there's no follow-up. Okay. You're kind of standing there. Presumably at this point you drew your weapon and Bang. nothing. Okay. Except the voice from around the corner. There's a, there's Are you a, okay? There's a crawl space enough? Yep, there's enough through? room for people to get through now uh, if they want to. Clark will call up and say, I'm through. Well, I'm already halfway down the stairs because I thought your back is thrown. Yeah. Is everything okay? No. No, uh, what, what happened? Uh, Blumpkins? There's a lot to talk about. Come on down. Are you through? You hear that hopeful voice from around the corner. I'm like, on, I'm on the way down as I was saying all this stuff, dude. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to hear her now, though, because there's not a wall of stone in front of you. Uh, almost. It sounds Blumpkins? like you're close. Was it Blumpkins? Clark grabs the glaive and begins to crawl through the pile once he sees the front end of his friends. Okay. It's easy enough to crawl through now. <laughs> I'll sit. He's running away from you, clearly. He's no. infested again. Um, yeah, you move through the uh, the outer side. You see him disappear through the top that he's... He's made pretty substantial work of it, just kind of moving uh, this, this top down to about... Let's say about three feet, which is enough for each person to kind of bend over and crawl through, mm -hmm. yeah. or for Kujima to simply walk through at this point. Um, he did that very, very quickly. Yeah. Did he answer? Did, did you, you mark off that the soul that was lost? Hmm? Uh, sorry, the charge that was lost. I spent it. Okay. Yeah. Did you say that it was Blomkins? Or? I didn't say a thing. Okay. Correct. I forgot. Um, he ignored you. For the next minute. Yeah, as yeah. usual. <laughs> You find your voice pattern changing slightly. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you, the player, what happens, and you get to interpret it as the character. Sure. As you find yourself infested with the soul of a heavy drinking sailor. <sighs> That's the soul that was taken and used for that. <laughs> okay. Someone who was very comfortable on board a ship, but also probably pretty crass and very poorly educated. Uh... So you get to interpret that as you will. Blue warning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Clark, wait. It's dangerous. We're coming. <laughs> I'll, I'll follow, because, I mean, everybody else has already gone through. Okay. I'm going to trust that Kuzima comes through as well, because he just, like, kind of shows up. Is Kuzima just going through? going to take your people through? Uh, sure, though. I'll hop back in my belt. Okay. And again, it's enough of a gap that you can easily walk through on the other side. I'll go in the last. It sounds like a lot. Are there a lot of you? You hear that voice from around the corner. Not, and literally, it's around the corner at this point. Not too, too much. Point. Why? Uh, why? What are you asking? Are there risks if there's too many of us? We're just looking out for our safety. After all, we can't rescue you if we die. What the hell are you talking about? Just get me out of here if you can. You're welcome. I'm sorry. I've been here for a long time. It's okay, and hopefully May we're I not insight? here. Uh, you can, yeah. And also, you guys are literally around the corner. You're about, like, you see where those those uh, stairs end? And see where the door is? It's about 15 feet, or 10 to 15 feet in that direction. Dirty 20. Dirty 20? Um, you're picking up on definite frustration underlying it. She tries to cut it back with a secondary phrase, I'm sorry, or whatever. But there's a definite frustration as in, let's get this going, let's have this happen. And, and there are questions, the, the questions do come out about how many of them, how many of you are there 
but genuinely just made a huge amount of noise. And for all she knows, there was a cobalt with a few people. And she seems a bit joyous, frustrated, and eager. Um, maybe measuring would also be the same sort of thing. Okay. I'm, I'm still uh, in the back of the group, and I'm going to stay in the back of the group. Okay. Where are you? You sound so close, and you hear a, a banging there. on the, uh, the uh, metal doorway. It sounds like you're just around the corner. There's rocks. I'm going to walk out from around the corner, because we're still in darkness, so I'm invisible. Which doesn't make you undetectable, but yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it gives her disadvantage on any attempt to she notice notices, notices Do you there. Uh, nope, doesn't seem to notice you. As you see uh, the woman... Uh, Here, I got a 29 stealth. Uh, ...kind of crawling, uh, crawling or hanging on to the bars while I wrote a nat one, so she didn't even notice you were there. She was mm. too focused on the voices. Um, as I described, and from this distance, as you walk up to her, you can kind of easily see that sort of elven features, um, mostly with this hood, though, over, and the hood is definitely covering the left-hand side of her face. If what um, Zach has described before, it's because that part of the face is probably skeletal. Um, and gripping onto the, the bars, trying to look around the corner. Obviously can't look all the way around the corner, but trying mm -hmm. to see who's there. Why is part of your face covered? Uh, she starts as she looks in front to try to figure out where the voice just came from. 29 stilt. Uh, still doesn't see you. Who are you? Uh, you sound like the kobold. I am he. Oh, I can't see you. No, you can't. Oh, well. Why is your face covered? It hurts. What hurts? My face. Is it vulnerable to light? Yep. Yeah. There isn't any light, light down here. here. Hmm. Then why is it covered? It just hurts. Please it, uncover it. Why? It hurts. Hmm. I'm not sure I trust that you're an innocent victim or not, but uh, you might be, but you're going to want to convince us. She moves back from the bars. Who are you? You're with him. I know it. I'm not with You're anyone. here to torture me more, aren't you? I won't put up with any more. Let me free or leave me. My friend thinks that you have a gem for an eye and a partially skeletal face. Is that true? Is that what it looks like? I don't know. I can't tell. Neither can I. Well, if you perhaps take the hood off, I could tell you. It's okay. My face got messed up, too. The shadow just does that to people. Why are you doing this to me? Because I've been trapped I... here so long. I, I just want to be free. I have to ascertain that you're not a trap before I let my friends come over. A trap? Make a persuasion check. Hmm. Thirteen. She doesn't seem convinced. In fact, she kind of pulls back more into the round room. I can't see you. How can I trust you if I can't see you? You're the one who needs to extend trust. We can leave. How do I know you're not going to hurt me? If you're a victim in this, we have no intention of hurting you, and we will free you. However, if you're a trap, I need to find out first so you don't hurt the people I'm protecting. How can I be a trap? I've been trapped. I've been stuck down here. That might be true. I don't know. I can't tell. I, I can't trust you if I can't see you. Show yourself, please. Not going to happen. Please take your hood off. Who are you? Who are you people? I've knocked an arrow at this point. Okay. <laughs> not drawn, not anything, just around the corner with okay. an arrow ready. Thank you, uh, She's sounding increasingly desperate as if she is scared out of her mind by whatever invisible presence is now taunting her. Hmm. Well, 
I look over, I go around the corner. It's up to you guys. I don't know if she's a trap or just oh, too yeah. far gone to work with anyone. Radix walks to around you. towards the, the front. You can see me. Does that make you feel better? Clark will follow. Oh, you are real. I thought you might have been some of the uh, spirits. They've come from me before. Don't touch the uh, gate. It's magically warded. I'm not showing myself, but I'm just saying that from around the corner. Okay. I say in Draconic to Kazima, she's terrified. You just freaked her out more. She also could be acting. Fair. Mm-hmm. The if she has a half skeletal mm-hmm. face and a gem in her eye socket, she could. Okay. And she's in a room. Well, actually, we don't know that. Does that mean uh, I could see for a trap? Again? She could be some sort of um, evil creature he had ke- he had kept down here. Yes, you can but make a roll to try to see the trap. Where you want to look around the? the he'll, he'll come right around. Him. I'm not going to give her a target to aim at. To okay. So. Okay. Clark is also coming around. He's starting to look closely at the round edges of this door. Um, one of the things you know before you even roll, there's no lock, there's no door handle, there's no hinges. Okay. No door. But, but now you can you can roll. Okay. See what you do notice about it. Sure. Uh, times two is eight. So did I see that there's no door? You weren't looking at the door. No, there is a door. There's no hinges. There's no. There's no yeah. uh, handle. There's no lock. It is mm. a bar that is built in place. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Yeah. Okay. As the debate is going back and forth, and the person is sort of cowering in the back, uh, you take a closer look at this thing, um, and you kind of feel around the edges. The the metal, uh, and it is metal, which is very rare. Um, the metal is, is cold to the touch and a little bit tingly and sparkles slightly as you run your fingers over it. Um, you notice that on the, in the metal itself, bent into the metal, are, is writing of some kind. You're not familiar with, with it, but you've seen magical writing enough to know that there is magic somehow right. embedded in this. Um, make, a, uh, make a history check. Mm, history. Just make a straight up perception at this point. Sure. 22. 22. As you're moving around this, and you're not finding any sort of mechanisms whatsoever, there's nothing physical here, but there is that 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 carving all around the edges. Mm-hmm. The one thing that really occurs to you as you kind of take a knife and kind of scrape a little bit away is the reaction. Mm-hmm. You've seen this kind of metal before. What's that? What's his face from Awesome? It is star metal. Mm. Wow. The same thing you guys found in the hum. Right. This has been carved and magically enhanced somehow, but it is that same stuff. Okay. It's... If all that stands before, between me and freedom is a bit of pain, I suppose I can allow that. And she stands up. Uh, stretches out both arms, and now all of you can see the missing hand on the left hand, the forearm, which is nothing more than bone, but seems to still function as an arm, as she kind of reaches up and with the nub and with her hand pulls back on the hood. And you see an elven woman, but the left half of her face is nothing more than that revealed skeleton all the way back. There is the glowing gem in her eye, and for all four of you can make a let's call this a perception check yeah I we're relying on perception so much but it's just a useful skill 11 18, 18. this is only for the people who came all four around. of you well you, did you are you standing there still or well I went back around the corner to where they were okay. and then Clark came up okay because I think that, well actually if sorry it, anybody who's yeah, standing if, in front of it who's looking I guess I was thinking else is gone yeah, okay I will, but, uh, yeah. so, I so, so you've been standing there were you standing there still looking, or no? I was like around the corner. Okay. I already so started. Clark would be the one, and and yeah, would be the one. What did you roll? Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen. I think it was. You look at her, and it truly is hideous. 
but not necessarily for the reasons that immediately come to mind. Yes, the skeletal form of her face is is terrifying. The fact that it still moves like it is connected to the normal face is definitely a bit a bit odd. But the thing that you notice is that the left hand side of her skull doesn't exactly line up with the right hand side of her skull. It has a different shape than the right hand side of her skull. Well, I'll be a barnacles bastard. What are you? Clerical point. <laughs> she uh, she pushes back the, uh, the the cloak. There's no need to make fun. I've been hurt by this place. There's magic. I'm going to point to the gate. And Clark's acting a little odd, but he's pointing around the gate and shouting out something something about magic. Hmm. I think that's what you said. Hmm. I'll investigate <laughs> shortly. So, uh, Heather, was it? Uh, during one of our previous conversations, I was asking you questions, and you were visibly frustrated. Then you retreated and laughed. She a looks bit confused, yourself. which you see. Oh. What? I didn't. Were you invisible too? Not quite. What did you want? Sorry, I lost the rest of the question myself. I was just wondering why, why it was that she was frustrated. So close to getting free. And yet I was getting these questions. So many questions. And the laughter afterwards? And you didn't answer any of my questions, so... Laughter. Yes, you retreated. You put your hood back on. You retreated back closer to the wall and laughed yourself. So it's, it's like when you described that she was like kind of like laughing mm -hmm. to herself. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to like read your Sure, it. sure. I don't know what you mean. Hmm. That's odd. Are you some sort of sea hag? Make an inside check. 16. 16? A look of disgust passes across her face. Uh, specifically after the word hag is mentioned. I'm not one of those uncouth... And she kind of catches herself. Legends? She clearly had something else in mind, and the disgust passes quickly as her face sort of smooths back out into the look of, of fear. Mm. But it is almost in that instance as if you saw a mask flash out for a moment. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, this is more on Clark's memory than Jody's. Mm -hmm. um, Hags were disgust mm -hmm. and about the, the little pocket dimension we went to outside of a tour. Mm -hmm. Or outside of... No, it was outside of a queen. Outside of a queen. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't remember much of that, mm -hmm. but it, hags were discussed. So we fought hags, or we were... Or, Supposedly? You know, yeah, that's, yeah, he's going off of third-hand knowledge here. Yep. So he's trying to put two and two together and say that this is also a hag. Obviously, behind heavy rewards. Mm -hmm. Does the perception of being called a hag register as a sign of acceptance like is is it a, a, is it a hit on the identify basically as far as how she reacts the way I'll describe it uh, because you had a decent role huh. was she specifically reacted to sea hag okay right. with disgust okay so not the kind of hag is fine but sea hag not so much uh Clark will look to his party and say, I believe this one's trouble. We should move on. Yes, I believe she's trouble too. No, uh, wait. I'll walk into view and... Seeing that nothing's happened to my companions, she probably can't do anything across the bars. You said these were magic? Yeah, uh, some sort of writing. I know you. Yes. And she points with her good hand at you. Your name is... Zakis, isn't it? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, who are you? Who are you really? I walk out. If there's still no light, I'm still basically invisible, so just with a dart ready in case she makes a move to go after Zakis. Okay. In and she just starts laughing. I should have known. 
of all of the luck that I've had over the centuries. And she kind of straightens up. What? It would happen that of all the people who might come across my path again, and her face shifts on the humanoid side to one which is human, actually. A little bit familiar. Mm -hmm. I may not have given you my proper name before. Yes, we, we figured. You may know me as Bernice. 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 Yar! Uh, who's that? I have like 92 pages of notes. <laughs> <laughs> I have hangs two in the books and only one, <laughs> one with. <laughs> Where does Zachus know Bernice again, and does he recognize her? The name has some familiarity to it, and the face, even though only half of it is actually there, uh, does have some familiarity. Oh, uh, what the hell. Where do I know you from? You ruined my... And now the face drops entirely to this uh, uh, larger one. Now you see why the, the other half did not line up, is this face is actually larger than the meek elven form that she had displayed before, or even the human form, uh, as you see the face uh, turn a sort of gray-green, and there's a bit of a smirk, or a, almost a, uh, a sneer that appears on her face. Um, you may remember my lovely home, which you ruined, and her hand starts to squeeze. That is my name. And she drops the glamour, and you now see Bone Twitch changed, because obviously she does not have the other side of her face. So uh, what brings you to this uh, fine establishment? And we're going to take a break. <laughs> That's a revelation of Bone Twitches in this prison. Whoa. So let me see if I remember how to do this. Hopefully for those of you at home, this will only be, uh, we'll probably take 15 minutes in real time if you're watching this on the recording, which you can always find at youtube.com slash ENCAF1, youtube.com slash NCAF1, then this took no time at all, like magic. And we're back once again. Welcome back to Legend of the Drowned Isles. They are continuing in this episode, which I entitled Dig Deep and Descend, to go down further and further into Imrol's Tower. And you all just discovered, realized, or had revealed to you the true identity of the prisoner who is locked up in this tower. Being Bone Twitch, someone who you had fought before, and who essentially got sucked into another realm where she was drawing demons from. Well, maybe that was here. She has revealed herself now, realizing that the disguise was no longer even fruitful, and now stands before you, however changed from last you'd seen her, those that remember that is, being now half skeletal, it seems. And standoff continues, I suppose. Well, uh, this is awkward. A little bit. Uh, so how did you come to visit this wonderful establishment? I went through the portal that I created, mm -hmm. not intending to, but I did. And now I found myself here, and this place is dull. No one will make any sort of arrangement here. Arrangement? What, what type of, arrange of arrangements are we talking about? Oh, you, I hope, noticed my handiwork. Oh, yes. Throughout time, I have assisted many great people to do wonderful great things, and all I ask is a small reward in return, here and there. Or to become miserable servants, but I guess that's... Oh, no, none opinion. of my servants were miserable. None that deserved it, anyway. Hmm. But so, I found myself here in the need of allies and resources, and lo and behold, Imral Amakir had been here for a while. But he tricked me. He did this to me, and she kind of gestures with the still bone-only bone arm towards her, her now-revealed uh, half-skull. He said this would enhance what I needed to do. <laughs> and then he took one of my hands and locked me up here. Hmm. 
I want my revenge. On Emerald, on me. It was truly unfortunate what happened to your to your you library. You bested me. I suppose mm-hmm. I should be appreciative of that. But if you would assist me by opening up this cage, I would wish you no ill will, so long as you do not cross me. I can even offer you some assistance, as I was observant during my time here in the tower. I suspect that you have no idea what he was really up to. We have a general idea. Mm. He kept a journal. Did he? In scattered pieces, I'll admit, but it's a journal nonetheless. Scattered pieces. There was no better way to describe Imro Amakir than scattered pieces. Also, He's not strong enough to survive here. Not the kind of magic he wanted to do. He should have taken my offer up. I could have given him a lot more assistance. If I were kept whole, that is. Question. Does the, does the hallway going around the tower continue on? Yes. And there's a stairwell, presumably? Seems to be. Okay. Clark will head towards the top step. Okay. Uh, now that the sound of the the, the uh, echoing rocks is done, um, that sound you had heard before of the rushing water does get a bit stronger as you go to the top of the stairwell. Uh, you want me to take a look around? Or you want to wait till we're done with her? I'm done with her. I'm done with her. If we were to release you, uh, what guarantee do we have you wouldn't try to kill us? Maybe you are less informed than I had thought, but my word is my bond. More than just your mortal form. If I make a deal with you, I cannot break it. But I will make no deals which kill me or harm myself in any way. At least, not unless tricked, I suppose. How did Emerald trick you? That's something I'm not going to answer for you, sweetie, but good try. Mark, why not? From Kujima's couple of years spent trapped with the Fae, Mm -hmm. is she a Fae? Uh, That is an interesting question. I mean, what she's saying sounds Um, Fae-like. Not as such. There are other beings which have that level of power and and that level of of, uh, control over the universe, essentially, or they're in touch with that part of the universe. Don't trust beings that say they can't lie. They're the most deceptive of all. Who said anything about not lying? I do it quite well. Mm-hmm. She, she, she does. I mean, we follow it. Is it? Which is why... Uh, a little white lie here can build an entire fortune or destroy one in an instant. It's so satisfyingly fun. And if my crucible had been successful, I would have been cemented in my coven. I suppose I've moved on by now. I, I, I do. Has call. she revealed herself to you yet? Who? <laughs> Maybe Orf- not. Or Frost? Oh, she has then. Good. And her friend, good. The, the one with the more woodsy appearance. Oh, she had no interest in you, I'm afraid. She has mm-hmm. other plans in mind. And Metro and Morfrost. I wonder who they've replaced me with now. Did have interest in me? <laughs> she didn't sell me a spell, but for gold, not a contract. Oh, she did so much more for you. I can hardly wait until you find out. Well, neither can I. Uh, if we release you, let's say everything goes according to plan. Yeah. The contract is fulfilled. We escape this foul place. We go our way. You go your own way. Then what happens? You Seems just, reasonably good so far. You just rebuild your empire, and we stop you again. Sweetie, over, over I'm again. a force of nature. It is what I do, and I do it well. Well, yes, I, I don't doubt that. It's a necessary part of the universe, after all. Somewhere in a different right. realm, Emran just put his fist through a wall and doesn't know why. Elzara <laughs> <laughs> uh, will literally just walk by, not make eye contact, and follow Clark going, okay. continuing down the stairs. Okay. Clark will take the cue and start walking. Alright. Uh, hey, guys, wait! Oh, if he's not waking. You'll never survive without my help. What? Lies in the floors below. I don't know. Maybe you'll open up my cage and I'll tell you. But until then, I see no reason to. 
Well, I suppose we can go investigate and come back if we run into severe If you bodies. survive, then you can come back and crawl into me. Or release me now, and it won't be that much of an issue. Well, because I said you are a good liar. For all we know, there could be nothing down there. Could be, but there is. We've just and passed the screaming ghosts already. Oh, those amusing beasts. Well, I wouldn't use the word amusing, but... Yes. Oh, they are charming, aren't they? They sing so well. I'm not sure what kind of music you all listen to in Hagland, but it's <laughs> not I had that, hoped but... from your little transformation that perhaps you were seeing things differently, as I do. And she kind of uh, just sort of scratches along the side of her face, a natural look, except for the fact that it's the stump of her arm across the skull-like look of her face. What do you mean? Looks like you've got a problem. I could fix that, It's too. been solved. <laughs> the parasite has been removed. Does it look solved to you? It's not spreading anymore, so that's... I'll Isn't it? it? No. You've not noticed anything different? Shall I? <laughs> I'll try to focus... Do I see anything differently? I'll try to look at... I, I don't know... The barriers... Her... Okay. Make a wisdom saving throw. Awesome. That's cocked. Damn it! Like and that's a three, so that's for a uh, five total. <laughs> you get a mind-splitting headache. Suddenly, it comes on out of, no, out of nowhere. Should I be seeing a headache? <laughs> oh. Should I be feeling a headache? Oh, sweetheart. Now that your friends are gone, maybe we can talk. I know who you are. I've known for a very long time who you are. How long? How old are you? Well, that's... I, I was trying to see if you, if you were lying. If you had said 50 years, I would have your said... Your birth was foretold a long time ago, and... Well, let's just say I have some insider information. Or you're just trying to make me feel special. You are special. It would be a shame to see all of that specialness go away here. I mean, there aren't any books here or anything. I know. That's why I must absolutely get back to my tour. Exactly. Anyway. You've got an important role to play there. Hmm? With my help, I can make sure that happens. Without my help... Now that sounds like a deal in the making. I don't, know. I don't like where this is going. Hey, I've got to live too, you know. Well, yes, and we... we, we if I live by making your life better... At what cost? Oh, my There's always things. cost. Sure. You must have enemies you'd like to see go. People have stood in your way. Not really. Maybe Emerald himself, if he's still alive. I don't know how I feel about Emerald. I was happy. I was hoping. You to... should. She was right up to the cage uh, door. You should be afraid of him. I'm s somewhat certain to be. Good. First, I have to make sense of his. That's story. your first lesson. That one, I suppose, is free. He is my mentor, after all. Now. He will teach you nothing but pain and suffering. I was his co-worker once, and look what he did to me. A gift, to be sure, but not a great one. I don't doubt your words where Emeril is concerned. Uh, we were, after all, sent on a mission where there was a trap. We all almost died, but that was supposedly not intentional. Still, it, it, it kind of stings, you know? I'm sure it does. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I better catch up with my friends. Do you want to... Mm -hmm. Run the great library of a tour. Well, it seems like an awful lot of responsibility, but... It does. Now, I can't put you in that position. That is reserved for someone else, but I can make sure you have no opposition. But if it's reserved for, for somebody else... No, the other roles of helping you. Oh, you know so little. I would savor this if I had... time. Time is all anybody has in this realm. Yes. On that note, I'll return shortly. I better catch up with my friends. You'll hello, regret hello, hello, this hello. as she as you go away. The rest, of you, the rest of you moving down the stairs um, before he catches up. <laughs> um, the stairs descend as they have before. Now, though, you do notice that the stairs are a little rougher, as if they've been worked over a little bit more. And when you go about halfway down, the stairs themselves are nothing more than rubble. Um, awkward to move across, essentially difficult terrain for anyone who doesn't have anything special towards um, 
stone or rubble for moving across. Some people sometimes do. Um, it makes it a little tough as well as some of the walls are also collapsed in. Larger chunks are kind of thrown out and you kind of have to keep moving and almost squeezing around some of them. For you, Kuzaima, it's more like crawling over some of these larger rocks. Um, and so you get to the, the landing below. And as you move each step, you can hear this water louder and louder until finally you come down to this lower level. And across the walkway itself, you see streaming water flowing in from a hole in the wall. The hole itself is only about three feet tall. It's kind of oblong. It's not really rounded at all, but three feet at the top and only about two feet wide, uh, one foot wide. Uh, but out of it is pouring some of this brackish gray water. You've seen this before. Somehow this is the gray book rolling in here. It's flowing across the stairs and flowing down. Um, it's not covering the stairs where it flows, so that it's possible if you want to try to move around it, um, to very gingerly try to move around it, but it's flowing and continuing on downward. And you can hear where it sort of accumulates a little bit lower on. As you come around, um, you can just barely make out the interior of the room, um, and the walls are covered in, uh, in carved writing of some kind. It's hard to tell from this distance what it is. Um, you would recognize the penmanship, if you will, as to similar to what you'd seen on the metal grating itself. Um, you can't really see into the interior of the room unless you try to make your way around this water, but you do know this water is dangerous. Yep. You find yourself standing there as you come running to catch up to them. Well, this should go without saying, but I... Your arm twitches. Don't touch that water. Kind of like the hair stands up on your arm, except there's no hair on your arm. Slime. Slime sticks up in your arm. Yeah, it's, mm, it's not really slime. It's, it's more like that sort of rippling effect you sometimes get when your muscles are firing for no reason. Hmm. Why is that? Nothing. Well, I'm going to scout ahead. Yeah. I wish no, reason in. To, <clears throat> no reason to risk all of us. How wide is it again? Um, about three quarters of, the, of the, the, the hallway is taken up by the water. The, because of the rocks all broken up as they are, it's not really a solid wash of water. More like it flows in around and between these rocks. If you pick your way around, there's some larger rocks you can kind of step to here and there. But it is a bit, uh, a bit sketchy. Okay. And the water does have that same thick brackish look to it. Gross. As well as, yeah, that little bit of acrid smell. Um, How easily could we all jump over this? How agile are you? Enough. I mean, that little area there that the water's not covering be a little difficult for you guys to walk across a span that wide. For me, that's a normal footpath. And again, this is not flat mm -hmm. stone anymore. It's crumbled and, and piled up. Uh... Yeah. Um, is this close enough to being an underground tunnel for my favorite terrain to absolutely fit? Absolutely. I have some, especially here where the where the uh, the stones have actually been destroyed more, and it's in in some ways you can look upon it as this hole in the wall that's tunnel that's been created is kind of almost like that that force that existence is flowing out over the over the, the stairs as much as the stairs are being transformed into it. Um, on a philosophical letter, level, this is probably something that, that you actually would kind of come up with, would be the idea that it's more like two realms crossing over than it is like a normal waterfall pushing into uh, a, a worked area. Uh, yeah, the applicable stuff here would be that uh, difficult terrain doesn't slow my group's travel. Okay, yep, as you can point out where to go. And if I'm traveling alone, I can move stealthy at a normal pace instead of half speed. Okay. Um, the rest is all foraging and other activities and whatnot. But foraging isn't probably applicable here, but the but the ability to move around the difficult terrain, you can definitely point out where there are solid rocks or there are solid places to put yeah. a foot uh, and lead them around. I'll there. just go ahead, I'll say just hold here for a minute, I'll check ahead, because... Uh, then I can move ahead at like 35 feet per round stealthing okay. instead of... You'll easily make it around the corner then to see the opening in the wall, which you've become familiar with, the sort of idea of these central rooms that are here. Mm. 
and the water continues on going down the well what would be the stairwell so it continues on to gather a little bit further down in the central room there's a little bit of a pooling of the water here but there are dry spots in the room what you see in this room is far different from most things you've expected before. For one, not only do you see the, the runic carvings on the walls, but inside there are runic carvings and the small glittering of little bits and pieces of gems um, around the room itself. In the center of the room, actually more up to one side, you see where the water has pooled, there is a growth coming out of the water and covering over a sort of egg-like sh uh, shaped structure. Uh, it would be about uh, six feet long, uh, but sort of tilted back, almost an, an egg in a crèche. But where this this uh, organic material kind of flows over, you can see that some of it joins into uh, metallic features. And to let me see if I get this right here. Uh, 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 and crystal in between these metallic features. The vines are kind of wrapped around it now. Um, you can see where the metal itself has been smashed and broken, but now being held together by these organic bits. Um, it glows faintly green in the room. The, the room in general glows? It, it green glows or? in the room. Okay, is it the structure that's holding the egg that's glowing or the egg that's glowing? Uh, the egg itself okay. from within. And it looks like there's a metal and crystal structure that was there that was damaged that's being held together by the organic? That's right. Things? The organic seems to be making up parts that are also missing as well, forming the same weave and pattern across it. Mm -hmm. You don't know what that weave or pattern is, if it's random, but it doesn't seem to be entirely random. Um, Anything else in the room? Or is it basically empty other than... Empty the, other than that. Um, it seems okay. like that was the feature of the room itself. Um, and the rest of the room was kind of carved around it almost. Okay, before I head back, I'm going to check down the stairs further. Okay. Uh, this time I will have you make an acrobatics check. It's at advantage. Um, because the water does kind of surge upward over the rocks at places. 21. 21. You kind of find yourself having to leap a little bit as you pull your feet away from a place just as the water not just flowing over the rocks, but actually seems to surge up after your feet. Yeah. Um, you, move on, you move on down the stairwell and find that uh, you can see the opening to the room below, but the water now has started to, peer, uh, to peter uh, to a level, and about uh, one foot now deep in this lower level is covered mm. in water. Um, there is no terrain to stand on on the other side. Uh, and I can't see the door from there, I expect. No. Nope. Uh, nope. There's no sense uh, of any light coming from that direction, though, either. Unlike upstairs, where you kind of get that little bit of glow from the egg. Hmm. Um. Are you okay? Uh. Do my tiny servants gain any mass or. But when they're converted, or are they basically just the same? Thing? I'd say they're, they're the same. Okay. They're animated matter um, in the same matter. Though. I pull out one of the candles and say, uh, no, I can't describe anything anyways. It doesn't actually see that way. Never mind. Do they have blind sight or something? Yeah. Or, yeah. That's all they've got is yeah. blind sight. Yeah. Uh, and it's short too, isn't it? Uh, it's like 60 feet, I oh, think. Oh, okay. But they can't tell colors or anything, so yeah. it's, it's not so useful. Um, and they can't speak. So, uh, huh. I'm tempted to have them stand on each other's heads and then I'll stand on top of them and walk out into there, but that would probably be a poor choice of plan. Um, walk out into the room? Yeah, do I have anything... I don't really have anything for this, uh, so okay, I'll just head back up. Okay, and tell them that uh, one floor down, there's an egg in a metal and crystal holder with what? some organic stuff from the stream here, growing over it. Let me just see this. Uh, and the floor below that is under a foot of water. Uh, so, uh, I couldn't get in any further. 
But our feet touched the water when we first... Yeah, it wasn't until we, uh, I think, we made a save when we, any of us that were trapped in the water and had to hold our breath. When it surged over you, essentially. Yeah. Uh, that's where you had that so walking into it critical be. moment. Okay, well, I yeah, Not although that I'm eager to do so, but there might be stuff hiding in the water, too, for all we know. So it's only a foot. You ever been it's bitten by a poisonous eel? No. They're a lot slimmer than a foot. We have boots? That's... Anyway. I have an idea. It's I, up I, to you guys. You said there was carvings on the walls? I didn't, but I will oh, mention shit. it, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we had, uh, I think we had seen right. it, but we hadn't... Uh, I heard yeah. a voice somewhere so that way you say there was carvings on yeah, the walls. Yeah, well, uh, we couldn't decipher what it was because we're at a distance, so what did I see of the carvings when I got closer? Um, you have, are you trained in Arcane? Mm. You I am bar the bar in arcane. Thing, yeah. uh, make an arcane check. Arcane. Woohoo! That's a twelve. Twelve. You're definite that they were arcane symbols. You're not sure what they were, and it would take a bit of study to figure them out. Um, did they did they seem like wardings or magic uh, or uh, active magic or just someone writing an arcane? Script. Nothing reacted as you passed by them, but their actual purpose is still uh, mm. unknown to you. The one thing I will say is occasionally did notice uh, large scratches across them, mm. as if something had tried to and only partially succeeded in oh. scratching them out. Wait a second. I'll, uh, I'll uh, put on uh, Detect Magic, and then I'll go back down I, one floor and look at the I, thing. I, I could Perfect. give myself the ability to fly, avoid all the water, Go down, take a look at the symbols, and interpret what they mean. It's okay, you're back. talking to an empty area with dotted lines around it where Kuzama <laughs> used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Little puff of smoke, too. Okay, so I'm sitting that, like, thinking to myself, looking up in the air. Well, these two are also there, so is Radix. Then I'm, like, looking to the side, right, Kuzama? And it's like, fuck, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, as I um, kind of hop down and so yeah. through the area. Uh, one is the stream magic. Two, the writing. Three, the egg or the stuff that's encasing it is what he'd mostly be looking at. All of the above. <laughs> um, huh. Immediately, when, are you activating the spell while you're up there, or when, when you get down? Uh, I I just cast it. I don't bother doing the ritual, so I cast it before I go. Okay. Immediately, the the stream does register as magic. Uh, it represents a magic that you're not familiar with. It's sort of pure white but with black specks in it. Um, normally you've taken that to mean divination magic and necromancy, but this seems a little bit different than both of those. It's more of an opaque color than a translucent it, it, color. It, it, yeah, Ooh. the muddiness of the water is even translated into the, into the magic itself. Um, um, you also kind of notice little emanations within the water itself, as though there are other small things in it which are magical. Um, and they, they seem to move in not an unfamiliar way, because you've mm -hmm. hunted fish before. Yeah, uh, and it's or kind possibly of like little wheels. tadpole like things that might get in you. Um, okay, and you move further like down. Mm -hmm. um, the walls do emanate a kind of magic. Uh, it's passive as if it had been cast and now they are sitting dormant again. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be a. Well, those creatures struck me. What? With the three arms. Oh, those things. <laughs> they are present, but they're not necessarily angry at us. Gawkins. Carry on. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that is all. Um, the emanation is faintly brown, <laughs> uh, which suggests that it's more like a transmutation magic. Okay. And roll a percentile for me, please. Transmutation is mm -hmm. 48. 48. Let's see if this is interesting. Okay. okay. Um, that's weird, but I'm going to go with it because I decided to use this table. Uh, as you look around the room, there is a reverberation of the uh, magic that's on the wall that kind of seems to sweep out almost on its own sweep across the, the ground as well and pick up some of that magical energy which for a moment dims weirdly enough 
You mean from the stream? From the stream, okay. yeah. Uh, and kind of sweeps around the room, gathering little bits of magic until it forms into a ball in front of you. And the ball grows and boom, pulses and boom, pulses again and boom, pulses to the size of a small horse. And standing in front of you after the, 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 the air washes this away is a small horse that's white in color and has one singular horn on its forehead. Is it magical? Because just because it happens it, to be looking at it. It, is, uh, it was emanating magic, but after that washes away, there is magic that remains, but not... i got to check on that. They are themselves. Because if it's a unicorn, then, Why yeah, it's like heavy divine magic. magic. Definitely divine magic, yeah. But immediately upon the water rushing over it, so you, so you watch with horror as it starts to wash up and wash up and over, start climbing over it. It whinnies in pain and agony, which everybody hears very clearly, uh, and then starts to uh, to run. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw, because it's going to try to run right through you. Okay, because I'm going to try and hop on its back. Um, okay, let's call that a uh, an acrobatics roll then. Uh, instead of the save, or on yes, top of the instead save? of the save. Uh, so acrobatics, twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. All right. I rolled a nineteen. As it as it runs by, you kind of leap over, put a couple of feet on the wall, and leap up onto this thing. As uh, a bonus action, I cast healing word on it. Uh, okay. Uh, make your roll to cast Healing Word. Let's see. Um, as all of you hear the the uncanny and strangely hopeful whinny of a horse from down below. And then the sound of splashing Jesus. and crashing. Uh, and we'll, get we'll see here. if it can... I rolled two ones. Really good. Oh no. So it heals uh, four. Okay. Um, as you look down, you can see the stuff swirling about its legs and starting to burrow under its skin. Uh, and it starts to push forward awkwardly, kind of bouncing a little bit from side to side on the walls. You're still on board. Uh, make a This you'll need to make a dexterity saving throw to try to hang on to the thing as it's kind of going crazily. Mm. 17. 17? Now yeah, you're gripping onto its its uh, its mane with, with as much as you can. You can feel the mane start to get a little bit uh, slimy under your grasp. grasp. Uh, and coming up around the corner, the three of you suddenly see a unicorn running up the stairs, Kuzima gripping on, on the bottom of it. A small from, unicorn. It is a small unicorn. From where you can see, uh, its legs have already turned pale white and small bumps are now appearing, uh, sorry, pale gray, and small bumps are now appearing on its underside and crawling up its chest as well. I have become the wall. I'm Dexterity the saving wall. throw for all three too. of you. I'm gonna go up and do that, gonna, do okay. thing again. Still gotta make sure you're not gonna get horned. For sure. Mm. I got a nine, 10 total. Six. Dex saving throw? Uh, yes. Okay. 20, 30. Okay, so dirty twenty. What did you get? Six. Six. And you get a nine. Or nine? Ten. Okay, so it is not trying to hit you, which means it'll roll a disadvantage, but it will end up probably hitting you. Uh, oh, this rolls shitty. That is a fifteen to hit on you. Yeah. Yes, that was with disadvantage. Oh, and that's a eighteen to hit for uh, Elzera. Ah. Is that a hit? Yeah. Okay. Uh, His become, wouldn't have. You're hit. gonna become part of a unicorn. Uh, well, you're lucky. I rolled badly, so six bludgeoning damage to you, and <laughs> ten bludgeoning damage to you. Uh, as literally it bowls around the corner, you find yourself kind of shoved aside, and the legs, kind of as they're tromping along, kind of knee and push you to the sides, kind of flattening you out there. You manage to make it up to the next level and kind of duck in a little bit. Well, I was Actually, there's nowhere to duck. Up at the ceiling. Uh, Brace. Okay. I'm just hoping it doesn't catch my junk on the way by. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to avoid it, but I will have you do an ex uh, acrobatics roll to see sure. if you can stay on it. Acrobatics. Uh, 25. 25. You flatten yourself up against the wall, and it's kind of... The ceiling? Uh, sorry, the ceiling. Uh, and you do kind of see its horn as it kind of looks up and notices you and, and dips its head up a little bit as the horn comes uncomfortably <sighs> close to the most dangly bit of you as you're hanging up there. Uh, Kuzaima, you've seen the rest of them kind of splaying out against the walls. Um, it begins to to cough uh, as it's moving along. 
It's okay. racing along right by that that uh, the the cage door as well, uh, and you hear a sort of what the from the inside the cage as it continues to run up. Uh, I am going to try to calm it down because she has some healing stuff. Maybe she can do something. Okay. Uh, make an animal handling roll. Yep. Uh, dis disadvantage because it is terrified. Uh, Still 16. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, how are you calming it down? Uh, whispering in its ears to just slow down. Everything will be okay. Trying to... Whatever. He's actually trained in it, so he knows how to deal with animals. I only know how to deal with cats. <laughs> um... Do any of you Which understand celestial <laughs> as a language? No. Do any of you understand celestial as a language? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, no, I was the them. only one. Okay. Just wanted yeah. to check to make sure because sometimes that, that gets by me. Um, as you hear it uh, in between the, the, the whinnies, it's still racing upward. Um, and then uh, outside of the water now, it feels a little bit better. Uh, but you hear it say something that you don't understand. But the words seem to almost uh, uh, reverberate like uh, like a, a, a tinkling of small bells in your ears and you have this feeling that you've heard something unusual. Um, it tries again. Do you understand Elvish? Nope. Nope. Uh, but you don't hear understanding uh, of, of, of the voice, but it sounds closer to something you've heard other people speak. Do, uh, depending on how loud it do is. Do I hear it from down yeah. the next uh, floor? I will say you guys do hear, make out a little bit of it. You hear that first one, which is just like, what the hell was that sound? It should never come out of a thing. Uh, although it sounded beautiful. And the second one uh, was, where am I? What am I doing here? And why do I hurt so much? What's happening to me? Uh, as uh, the panic of this, this creature is, is calling out. As I hear that, I'm going to start running up the stairs and start saying an elvish... It'll be okay. We'll try to fix this. Okay. I'll just follow up Zara, and it's like, wait. <laughs> so that will be now. You can choose to make it animal handling, which means you're treating it like an animal, or you can choose to do persuasion, which means you're treating it like a person. Do animal. And that changes sort of the way that the flavor of what you're saying matters. It's going to be animal handling because okay. it's a positive eight instead of a negative one. Okay, so it's, so it's, it's more like, whoa, it's okay, it's okay, it's all right, it's all yeah. right, that kind of thing, yeah. as it is slowing down from, from uh, Kuzima's uh, uh, presence. Ooh, that teetered, that teetered on that 20. <laughs> Plus a two. Ooh. So 10. <laughs> all right, so as you're rushing up and trying to calm it, uh, it's stuck. Uh, as it does kind of stop trotting, now it's hit those actual solid stairs, mm -hmm. and it's actually having a little bit of difficulty moving. And then uh, it starts to slow a little bit, and then it finds it can't turn in, sp in its place, so it's facing forward, unfortunately. I will stream an elven. Wait! Um, and it's I am kind of craning its neck to try to look at you with a wild look in its eyes. Uh, I am going to uh, whisper it here, and I will try persuasion, because if it's speaking languages, then I'm going to just say that. I was going common. Uh, it's, a, it's okay. We have a healer. We can try. Uh, we can help you. Okay. Um, That's all make, he knows. make a persuasion check you at uh, disadvantage. Because you're lying. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, it's not that. We have a healer. Yeah. It's not that. Well, the 19 would have been nice, but no, that's a nine total. As you speak to it, and it looks at you, not understanding what you're saying. Hmm. Uh, the tone sort of reached it, and then it started to. to you saw as its head and craned around, you saw a bump kind of form on its neck and grow a little bit, and then, then the skin kind of sag and turn gray. Uh, and it kind of, once again, seems terrified. Uh, if you can do any healing things with the bag of stuff, uh, go ahead. He's It's starting to turn gray and bumpy. What needed to happen? What was used to heal Zacchaeus? Well, we uh, got a ring to a dude Finn the who Whistler. magically yeah. like pulled it yeah. out of me. But I think you, uh, she might not have it known right now, though. But uh, uh, we've used uh, the greater restoration a few times for general stuff like this. But I don't know if she has it at the moment. So as you're racing up, what are you doing? Clark we've seen the rest descending. of the race underneath Clark you. Clark is descending. Descending? Okay. Slowly. So finally, I can descend? Yeah. 
And and also, you also, dangly bits are descending. Also down the stairs. Okay, you going to go down the stairs too? Okay, I, mean, I think everybody else is running up the stairs yeah. at this point. Yeah. All right. Is, is it waiting? I'll keep going up until I, think I it's see. Stopped. It's it's stopped at the moment, but you can see it kind of stepping and trying to move around, and the, the hallway is too narrow for it to actually turn, okay. and it's kind of turning, craning its neck, almost painfully craning its neck. Its eyes are bright white. There's a bit of, of, uh, of almost flecks of foam coming out of its mouth. It looks terrified. And, and you can I... see this, 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 imi- this, this almost bubbling and rippling underneath its flesh as what you know is probably happening to it yeah. from your own experience. I'll tell it to I, I just wanted to take a look at it to see if I can make this better. Okay. I'll tell it in Elven. So, and this is literally what I'm... Uh, in, in Elven going like this. Okay. Like. That sounds like a persuasion roll. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Sure. I didn't say Can the phrase... Can I be assisting her because I'm trying to persuade it? I sure. didn't say... Why don't you roll with advantage? Shush. DR, DR mm-hmm. one. I did not mm-hmm. say it. I said, please roll with one. <laughs> I can't use those <laughs> dice now. <laughs> Hundred dice set still has dice cursing. Okay. Oh, well, where did I just you threw go? that one away. <laughs> that was a re-roll, that one. Yeah, yeah it's, no, it was seventeen. What, who knows what it was? Is it seventeen? Yeah, let's just re-roll that one. Uh, it's with advantage, remember? So. Yeah, but it's seventeen. <laughs> I picked it up and so pulled it out like Let's that. get it. Let's get it into the thing. You might roll a two-zero next. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> uh, 14. 14? Okay. With you and Kuzumayo kind of whispering on, on it in its uh, Kuzaima. I was doing so good for so long. <laughs> uh, whispering into its ear and you're kind of approaching it with open hands. It seems to be calming down a little bit. It's not moving, but you can see it wincing in pain every once in a while. And you actually hear an audible crack as one of its legs kind of twitch underneath it involuntarily. And even even you on its back, you can feel it kind of shifting. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go over its head and land in front of it. Okay. Easily enough done. Are you you're landing up up the stairs then from it? Yeah. Okay. Easily enough done. And I'm gonna try another uh, healing word. Uh, he'd be sort of holding its leg and trying to heal it, but uh, that'll just be one. And it healed more than the first one did. Uh, so okay. that's six uh, points, if that matters for any it, of it. It seems to be the the leg itself kind of straightens and it kind of tentatively takes a, a, a step on that leg again, but you can still, the, the the rippling effect of whatever is moving through its body is still happening, is still occurring. Um, it's going so much faster. Where am I? I don't understand, it's saying in, in Elvin. We don't really know either. I don't know. I what place you. is this? I need to know. The shadow. The shadow. Oh, no. Why? I wish I didn't know that. Why? What, what I shouldn't be here. This well, place is forbidden. None of us should be here, but... I need to leave. As we're, do we. Uh, we're trying. Where's the exit? I can leave this place. Sort of. But there are too many of you. I can't take you all with me. How many can you take at the same time? Three. And are, are you okay, by the way? No. You look very uh, great. I need to leave this place now. What's it saying? It needs to leave this place now and can only take I think I know of a place. Uh, if it's nearby, where in the shadow am I? Can you tell me in that? In the tower. festering. I do not know this place. In the festering. Oh, no. That's too far. I can never make it. Where is the place? And you can see it kind of fighting and trying to not wince as it's gained a bit of calmness now, uh, but it is starting to tighten its muscles and almost try to, you know, you see a little bulge here and it tries to almost adjust its mm. muscles so that it, it keeps it at bay, but then it slides over. I get in front of its face and go, mm, mm, mm. What? I can't speak Elvish. Um, what, what is... I'm saying take them, Okay. but it can't understand uh, Yeah. It's, it's... Not as smart as I'd hoped, actually. I just realized. <laughs> uh, so let's see. <laughs> if if you like, well, say well, this <laughs> out loud, <laughs> yeah, but you guys might say no. <laughs> I think your friend wants me to take you with me, but now that I know where I am, I, I can take you no place safe. Where is the place that you can travel through? Uh, 
I've heard there's a kind soul who makes people smile. It gives them hope. It is all I know. I'm not supposed to be here. Or what's his name? The, the fairy guy. Bernard. Bernard, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> is that elvish? That's actually how I've he hears all of you in some way. No. Um, I don't know. I think so. Oh. Oh. In the and, meantime, and how you can we help you? I, I don't know. I feel so strange. And actually, not going to hold its hand up like that, but um, its tail starts swishing. Uh, and it starts craning its it neck. You can see it as it turns its head a little bit. It's sort of crack, 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 as if it's trying to 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 straighten its spine, but having difficulty. I cannot return like this. If I if I go back like this, this infestation will go with me. You have to kill me now, please. Yeah. I can't understand it. Don't look at me. Yeah, the He's desperate. Asking, you guys have to translate for me. He's asking yep. for you to kill him. He can't go back like you, this. you down there, two feet tall, kill this thing. <laughs> Please, and it actually I, I holds it. up its neck and it exposes its neck. I just realized I only have fifteen spells. <laughs> Oops. Um. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I if, said, I, well, who, who do I see nearby? Uh, I'm there. Yeah, because. Okay. Looking look. at your hesitation, because uh, there is a bit of a pause, it looks down and looks straight at you, actually. You should understand, not in the way you want to. If I carry this back to where I'm from, it will stay there. And I can feel myself leaving. I don't know how I came here, but I know I'm leaving. Is that what it... Uh, does it want to die? Or, I, it wants I should, to say, die to save its people. Does it need to die? Okay. The, the, clear, the clear indication is that it's afraid of this infestation. Yeah. And if it takes it back to wherever unicorns go, mm -hmm. this could be I bad. double stab it in the throat with a pair of silver daggers. <laughs> that surprises it. Uh, but it's at it, it's at advantage. Well, we'll it, you'll roll to see if it you get... It exposed its throat to yeah. me. It, so it did. It did. Uh, roll just to see if uh, you get a crit. Okay. Well, I did get a 19 on one, but uh, okay, no crit. You did hit um, um, easily enough. You do have sneak attack. This is going to be messy. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes, this uh, is going to be very messy. Guess who's not there? So, <laughs> D4 plus 4. I got a date with an egg. D4 plus 0. Don't step in the water. And this is the first round of combat, so I get an extra weapon attack. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that definitely. adds... If the second, uh, yeah, that adds an extra d8. I need another d4. Uh, and shoot, where's my yeah, one d6 sneak attack. I believe that's everything. <laughs> well, so that's many a lot ones. Of ones. Oh I my rolled, god! I rolled four ones on those dice. Hard to kill such a beautiful uh, thing. Two, three, four, it five, truly, truly is. six. Um. Let's see, uh, 10, 14, nothing from the offhand, 1, hmm. I did 14. Okay. Instinctively, it does kind of cry out in pain, and it's this weird combination of celestial and a horse whinnying that, un uh, actually, all of your roll charisma saving throws. Am I enough, enough to hear three. it? You'll hear it. Have to be in no, there. you'll hear it. Okay. I got a 3. 9. 24. 24. Uh, aside, aside from you who does the, the dirty deed, uh, all of the rest of you find yourself involuntary crying. Like, there's just something about this the magic dying in this moment. Even you, who at a distance just hears this, and just this overwhelming sadness and resolution comes through you. Mm -hmm. uh, it still stands, but it once again holds itself still. So roll with advantage. I will... Uh, you see its blood coming out, but not red. Its blood is is sort of a pure white with silver droplets in it. Don't get that. Okay, that's a twenty-seven to hit. Yeah, it's uh, again just rolling. No to see critical. Crit. Oh, the dice are better that time. That's I will try fifteen. To, like keep it calm. Okay. Uh, animal handling or persuasion. That's a twelve for animal handling. 
Okay. It, it seems to be kind of resolute to this, yeah. but it, it seems to turn its its head and kind of lets you crane its head in its, in its hands. And it sees you crying. Uh, and then for a moment, there's this weird quiet that goes all around you. Do not fear, child. This was not how I was going to go about my day. But I will return with hope. My name is Laviel. Laviel? Uh, and uh, as it uh, as it uh, dies, I think I'm sorry. Um, as I'm covered in gallons of of unicorn blood. <laughs> uh, do you have any wounds currently? Uh, no, because we just rested. Okay. Um, I got gored by it. <laughs> do I get? <laughs> you, got, you got knocked over by it. Yeah. Uh, do you have any wounds currently? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Sam. Um, and do I hear that its name is Laviel? No, okay. only she heard that. Uh, it is as though it went to her mind. Uh, because they do actually have telepathy. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as well, which cool. I'd forgotten about. <laughs> because they could have used that. They're not a powerful celestial, but yeah. neat. Um, I remember in what would so yeah, if we knew about them. Your, well, let me see here. Do, 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 do. You probably is have less him? wounds than it has in ability. No. Uh, is it close? So no. ten, points, 10 points of healing if you have, if you're exactly right there. Exactly 10. Yeah. Well, I had so I awesome. Go. Uh, well, for her first of all, and for uh, him, uh, no, I think you get ten points though. Uh, for you, make a wisdom, yeah, wisdom saving throw. But but I wanted HP, and that's a fourteen plus. I believe that's one. I think plus two. Great, sixteen total. As it's dying, and this this blood is pouring out of it, which has this strange tint to it. Um, a beautiful, it is a creature dying, but there's something magical even in the inherent in its very being. Um, you find yourself mesmerized by it, and as the, 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 the blood is sort of pumping out, you feel resistance from your, your right hand, the gray hand. What kind of resistance? As if it does not want to go anywhere near it. But you hold on to that. What do you choose to do next? I'll just kind of like walk this way, leaving my hand. I mean, walk. Where are you walking? To? The unicorn. Okay. You've got control over your hand, but you could feel the resistance, and yeah. you had to mentally take control of it. You moved closer to the to the unicorn. Mm -hmm. Okay. You feel that resistance growing stronger, but you have control over it for the moment. Yeah. It was, it was your there. right eye shuts involuntarily. Turn my left side towards the unicorn. Or sorry, your yeah, your right yeah. eye. Mm -hmm. Yep. You can see its blood uh, slipping down onto the onto the ground, um, and you see uh, the little motions that were rippling across its skin grow silent one by one. Yeah. Make an arcana check. Yes. Thirteen plus thirteen, so twenty-six. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> In life, it could not fight this. In death, it cures this. Its blood is powerful and has great healing magic. I'll put the gray hand in the unicorn blood. Okay. Make a wisdom saving throw as the hand resists. Four. As you go to push the hand towards it, it resists and holds back. And you find yourself in this weird position, like a mime fighting against the wind. You have your whole body twisting towards it and it will not move. The rest of you see this strange struggle going on. Well, the two of you actually see this May strange struggle. May I make an struggle. alchemy roll? Uh, sure. To see if I know, like, any uses of that. Uh, 13 on the dice, we said wisdom or intelligence for that? Um, for this, it would be a, a, almost a leap of understanding, so it's more like wisdom. Okay, so that would be 13, 17, 13 plus 8. So 20... Only just now is it hitting you. This is a unicorn a pure celestial form, the defender of all that is natural and good in the world. Even in death, that pure natural healing magic will persist, although you can see that the very form of the unicorn seems to be vanishing, moving away from this plane entirely, probably back to where it came from. And seeing his resistance, or seeing the arm resisting this, uh, it means that that blood, for the briefest of moments, 
can affect whatever changes have happened. I'm going to trip Zacca so he falls face first onto it. Okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I was going to do. <laughs> Why don't you make an attack roll? We'll say you're assisting as the both of you kind of look at each other and then nod and then <laughs> having a face plan onto this. Uh, 15 plus this would be a strength. Uh, yeah, an arm strike strength. Uh, so or that act, would be yeah. 22. 22? I'm pretty sure your AC's not 22. Oh, <laughs> As you find yourself kind of fighting and like starting to put your other hand there and holding, you go, Bleep! and just kind of land, Poof. face plant into it. Oh. Uh, and, uh, and I apologize to the unicorn. Kind of, <laughs> kind of end up sort of face into the, the body of the unicorn, and you're kind of sputtering until you feel this, en this enormous uh, tingling sound, a tingling sensation. And it is as though your, you know, when you, you, a part of your body goes to sleep, mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> typically your arm, it is as though it is waking up. And so that's pins and needles condition is happening all throughout that entire side of your face. And you kind of instinctively push yourself back and see your hand is restored to normal. Uh, and you all can see now where the splash of blood has had, gone across his face. It is also all restored to normal. You no longer are disfigured. Cool. And as you lean back away from this, um, there is the faint sound, almost like an echo of a horse whinnying happily as the body itself vanishes and then motes of little energy fly out and dissipate. Is it going to have a scar? Or does it go back to its home world? Wait, don't leave yet, I have questions. Well, I squeegee some blood into a vial. Me it too. vanishes with it. Okay. Uh, the entirety of the creature vanishes. Actually, what's left there are uh, those small um, infesting creatures, the same which you pulled out of Zacchaeus's arm before. Ooh, fireball! But they're but they are, they are kind yeah. of like fish out of water. They are flopping a little bit and dying. I get the hammer to smash them too. Okay, they easily smash. They're not that they're not that tough once exposed. Where are you in all this? I'm in the egg room. I'm going to try he, to get to it. He has a date with it. So you're going down even further? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. As you all kind of catch your breath, um, you hear Radix from up above. She was much faster than all of you and ran up ahead. What was that? And where did Clark go? Uh, As okay. you start to uh, make your way across that difficult terrain. Mm. I think it was a divine being. Um, make a... a Acrobatics check to move down. Remember, this is sure. partially flooded ground, and you're walking across this difficult terrain. Okay. Or you can take twice as long to get across it if you're taking. I'm happy to take twice as long. Okay, so the difficult terrain time. will kick in. Okay. Um, the rocks are a little bit under turning under your feet, and mm -hmm. you can you can feel the sole of your boot get a little bit wet as you pull one foot up, and it's no longer wet anymore as the water goes back down where it was, okay. not acting quite like water at all. Right. You're making your way around here. Yep. And you can see I'm this. Trying to get to a landing that's close to the egg. Uh, you can kind of leap into the room. It's going to be a leap to get there mm -hmm. into what you hope is a dry spot. It looks like it's dry. Okay. Um, that will require an acrobatics okay. check. Uh, right. Uh, athletics. Um, sure. Okay. If 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 not, maybe use the glaive to help out. Uh, you can use athletics. That's just like sure brute force yeah. version of it. It's as the leaping to the, uh, And I'm much better at that anyway. Uh, athletics. 29. Oof, okay. Oof. You you jump in. You actually jump far enough to kind of uh, hit the back wall Do I know and kind of use watching? that to step down okay. onto a safe spot. <laughs> <coughs> You're in there, okay. standing beside this this green, slightly glow, glow, glowing egg-like thing. Let's have a look at it. Okay. Um, what are the rest of you doing now that you realize that Clark is not there? I'm going back down, but as I walk by Bone Twitch's cage, I'll like wink at her with my right eye. Like, Oh, it's only just begun, sweetie. Keep walking. <laughs> Good luck. You're going to need more of it. Um, as you look at this, it's, as I described before, mm -hmm. it is this this cage or orb-like uh, structure, egg oblong, egg-shaped, mm -hmm. uh, merging of the the organic these these vines that seem to come up out of the water themselves. Mm -hmm. And as you look closely at them, you can actually see there's a little. As, as fluid or something is being pumped through into this. The crystal is opaque, okay. um, but there are large panels of crystal, uh, opaque and dusty. You move any closer to it? Yeah, he'll get within touching range, but not touch it. Okay. He wants to observe it closely. 
Let's see if I can remember how to spell this thing. Oh, I did. There we go. Well, oh my God. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Uh, okay. Okay. That has nothing to observe at all. Um, as you look a little closer to it, mm. and you see that it is dusty and really close. If you move your head really, really close, you can see there is something within. It mm. is hollow. Mm. Let's take a look at the walls. Okay. Covered in magic ruins. Mm. How's your arcana? Not very good, but my trap sense is pretty good. Okay. So you're going to look around for any sort of traps? Yeah. All right. The rest of you are making your way back down? Yeah. yeah. With uh, Kuzima's help, it's not hard to make your way through there because you can point at all the stable points and where to avoid. But again, you're observing that this water is not acting like water. It does seem attracted to beings. It's creepy yeah. as water. It will try to grab you. As you move down, um, in particular, Zakis, mm-hmm. although to a certain degree as well, Elzera, you feel something distinct and about the same time because you've been exposed to this for a longer period of time but mm-hmm. you're not as connected to it you also start to feel something it's not the same as what you had felt before back on the island of Taraka but there is that sense of a power that's building in the area a power which is pure magical energy and the further down you're going you're starting to notice this there is a sense of not the hum itself, but something close. A hum like presence. The the hum it's easy for perhaps you to look in retrospect and realize that the hum is as much a byproduct of those beings interpreting this power and living with it and then, then expressing it into the world. But the power itself, the raw background radiation that this thing emits that is something you're coming to recognize. Something that, in particular, because he was so involved with it, Zakis first recognizes it and knows that taste of power. But the danger of that power as well. Um, Elzera, you're remembering this and how dominating the power could be, how dangerous it was, and how strange magic acted within its presence. Maybe even sometimes summoning unicorns. Weirdest thing on that table, I swear. Um, make a uh, let's call it a perception, t- or actually, the thieves' tools roll. It's the same thing, really. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Nothing really stands out to you. Um, it is clear as you look closer to the the orb. I do know I have a more description here. I have to add a couple of things come to you right away. For one, the growth that's on this was not part of the original design. You can see where the original design was kind of broken and shattered and torn apart. Mm -hmm. This is something trying to fill in for that. And that's coming from the water? That's coming out of the water. Okay. Um, In the back of this, sort of where the egg is, you can see there's a a, what looks like a pot almost, Mm -hmm. or an urn, uh, which is attached. It's probably about two and a half feet wide, made of stone. You can see that runes are carved into it as well. Um, It is uh, cracked along the upper part. You can see where it had been sealed with something or other, uh, and then the seal has been broken on the top. Um, What are you thinking right now? Uh, Clark is actually intending, in the next moment or two, to consult with the blade, um, its whole purpose is to bring balance to the shadow, and he's going to ask it. Is this balance? Do I, do I break it? Do I preserve it? What's what's the next step? Okay. What what do I do with this thing? Not so much what it is, but like, what needs to happen to it? Where are you? Your cat senses. Do I break it? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is always yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> See, it's resting on a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, something fell over. Wow, I literally had that just a moment ago, and I've already lost it. That's amazing. Thank you, universe, for using my brain as a sieve. All right, uh, let's see. At that level... Uh, 
Okay. Um, so Clark will, uh, in a moment, engage in meditation. Yeah. You find you have to be careful because the water is dripping into yep. the floor in here, but there's a bit of a slant, so it's not quite going in here. It is still flowing downward as well. Mm -hmm. um, as the three of you kind of come around the corner, Radix is, is sneaking up behind trying to keep it. Uh, she's having a little bit of difficulty because the water scares the crap out of her. She knows what it is. She's right, recognized it already. Yeah. And it is a place where you do not go. And also the remembrance of the fact that the water collapsed over top of you last time you went through it uh, is frightening her. You see Clark kind of poking around looking at this thing. Um, you don't know what its purpose is, but it's large enough to hold a good-sized humanoid at mm -hmm. least. Um, and the bands are, again, at looking up close, you can see just the hint of sparkle, not a lot left, but the same sort of thing you saw the the, uh, okay. the gate or the the block made up before. Right. Um, presumably another prisoner. The, the three of you uh, uh, see Clark there. I around the corner, what do I see? You see Clark poking at this thing. Actually, uh, we'll use the eye thing too. Well, Which I think, pardon me. The, the silver lining under his eye. I'll try to look at it through that. As okay. Well. Okay. Uh, it is definitely magical. Okay. It is transmutation, necromancy, evocation, and enchantment magic. So you're saying it's magical? It's a lot of magic. Okay. It's a lot of magic, and it's active. Okay. Um, as in, and you can see the energy actually flowing up from the water itself. Um, there is a bit of a gap that you have to jump over if you want to get through. Can I just see the writings on the wall from here, though? You can't really make them out that clo that okay. much detail. Clark you can see the ones on the outer wall. Yeah. Clark can see that there was writings, but yeah. that's about it. There's there's writings on... Actually, sorry, there's only writings on the inner part, where the inner chamber is. Yes, that's where I want to go. Um, so you're going to have to leap over the water to get there. How far is it? Uh, it's going to be a leap. You can't really get a running start, so you have to do a, strong, a strength or a, uh, acrobatics or athletics. Or magic. Or you could fly. It seems like a waste of <laughs> to, to get to get five or ten feet, that might be a bit much, but you're gonna have to do it to get back out as well. Yeah. And there's water all over the place, and mm -hmm. I, I told myself previously that that would never take risks. Actually, let's pretend I'm gonna cast fly, but let's pretend I didn't. Fuck, that would have been a lame okay. Anyway, I'm casting fly. So you're casting fly? <laughs> okay. You're like, hesitant, hesitant, screw it. <laughs> kind of float over towards or, it. <laughs> I go to take a running jump, and it looks like I'm falling, then it's like, fly. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be feather fall, okay. <laughs> which is a reaction. Um, okay, so you kind of start hovering in. What about the, t the other two, Elzara and um, Kazima? Mm -hmm. Um... I'm hopping over. Okay, make the, the leap. You could get advantage, don't you? Uh, uh, actually, yeah, because this is your tier terrain. terrain. It, it doesn't give me advantage on jumping or anything. Oh, though. sorry. Well, it kind of. Nope. Yeah. It just gives me some certain bonuses. Anyways, I got 24. Yeah, so. no problem. You hop in easily. I am going to. Turn into a fish. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be fun. That would be fun. Let's Turn do that. Into a, into a <laughs> come, come on back, Elzara. It's like... <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I am going to actually polymorph myself. Wow, okay. Uh, into just a... Uh, let's do... I don't want to use a wild shape. <laughs> Basically, my mood. All right. I'm uh, sending you signals in my brain. Yeah. Do you yeah. get them? Uh, no, but I'm excited. Okay. Um, my telepathy is broken. It's like telephone tag. Clark doesn't know anything about magic, so I really tag. have to sh shut up about this. <laughs> that reminds me. Roll a percentile. Me? Mm hmm. I think I did finally receive what you were saying. Oh, good. Thank you. I did good. pick one up. Glad to hear. I know I have a percent of less in here somewhere. I just How this, this. big is this hallway? As big as you can see there. The doorway it, it's, is basically a little over five feet. Five feet, five feet, less, feet. Yeah. Okay. 93. 93. Um, oh. So... We get another unicorn. <laughs> no, uh, you float over uh, and make a dexterity saving throw. I'm also like as high as I can be from the water. Yep, Foxes. Yep. make a dexterity saving throw. Cocked. Hey, that's 20. Okay. 
As you're floating over and kind of trying to move further and further away from this, uh, you, you feel something weird happen and you end, end up putting your hand up and the ceiling's a lot closer than you remember it and the floor's a lot closer than you remember it. You are now one foot or one size category larger. You are now a large creature. As, as everybody kind of sees, you, you made it, it over. Uh, 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 Zach has kind of expand. I check my knees up to make sure I don't touch the water. Pretty much, uh, you you're about the size of a uh, let's see, a small giant. Yeah, about the small size of a small giant. Uh, that does affect if you do physical attacks, but I don't think you're going to okay. be doing any physical attacks. Uh, can I it's basically, logically deduce that there is some kind of wild magic at work here? Easily, okay. easily. You you sense the stuff before, and then you kind of remember, oh crap, this messes up magic. Now with There's your polymorph spell. Oh uh, well, I would have seen him that happened to him. Pretty much, yeah. Something yeah. weird just happened. That's yeah. for sure. So then I wouldn't cast it. Okay. <laughs> There's a uh, wild magic at work here, and actually it's more like There's wild magic. Oh god, because oh. everything <laughs> everything gets gets uh, bigger. Uh, what is it with you? Wild magic so and like growing six, bigger. I was six foot six, and now I'm like 14, 15 fuck. feet. <laughs> Can I even get down the stairs anymore? Uh, not, not walking. Shit. You actually have to fly now to get down the I stairs. I can just like, lie down and fly. I have ten minutes to get down to the next floor, y'all. But so, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hop up on top of Zach and right down. <laughs> well, I think you're not going quite down quite yet. I will walk around. Uh, and I will absorb every single detail of every single wall, the ceiling, the floor, the egg, and okay. everything around the so egg. So you're going to start to examine the yeah. the room around you. Well, I guess that I'll. Jeez. What would you like to do? Um. Yeah. Thank you. I am going to turn into an air elemental. Okay. Because then I can get around Zacchus. Roll a d20 for me, please. Uh, 15. Okay. Uh, so you turn into uh, air, and you can feel this weird vibration around you, but it doesn't seem to affect you in this particular uh, effect. Uh, and then you can kind of easily move into the room. The room would be crowded, except for the fact that you don't take up any space at all. Um, Radix, Radix hops over without much difficulty, uh, and kind of. I, I would help her. Looks strange. Uh, she's pretty light on her feet Fair. anyway. Um, but even then, she would kind of like swoosh, give a little extra rise, and then she's like, bip, 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 and lands. And you get inside. Now. You're looking around the room and trying to examine these. And weirdly enough, fly works very well for you right now because it's not technically hover. Technically, fly should be you're always in motion. I've always liked fly could hover. Uh, so I, I can kind of imagine you and your giant form kind of slinking around the walls to try to examine everything yeah. now. So I'm making our comment check. And the egg. 18 for Arcana, so is that 13 or 14? 14, so 32. <laughs> 32. Okay. You had a suspicion when you first came in the room and, and saw the egg, but you thought, this must be impossible. This can't be what you think it is. But the more and more you look around the room, you more and more you recognize the, uh, the pattern. Again, this seems to have been written by the same hand. It's hard to say hand because carving stone's a little harder, but with the cantrip you can actually do it, uh, of emerald. And the entire chamber is focused on generating magic to go into this place. And in fact, it sort of compresses the magic from down below, the, the, the sense that you're getting from that, that strange stuff, into this. Um, from the descriptions that Clark gives of the little vessel that's behind it, uh, that little vessel probably was originally one of the power sources for this. In fact, looking around the edges of that, you realize that it was a container it was a container of spiritual energy, and it is now cracked. Most likely, this is where those ghosts came from, as they broke yeah. free. However, the pod in front of you is active. The pod has only a couple of different potential uses, and you recognize what they are. Mm -hmm. um, this is a clone pod. It's very, very difficult magic and doesn't always come out as you successfully want it to. But this is a way that some wizards have learned to, tr to cheat death by creating another version of themselves. And it's active, and there's something inside. And the water that's flowing into it 
is generating a different kind of energy than you might be happy with. All of you make wisdom saving throws. Seven. Seven. Thirteen. Eleven. Okay, so those less than fifteen. Uh, 19. Okay. Booming throughout your minds, definitely from within your head, um, is a, a loud psychic... Sorry, I shouldn't have rolled that with advantage. I'm still above 15. Pulse of energy with an inquisitive voice. Who dares disrupt my rest? Who dares venture into the home of Bezetzi? For those of you who failed, B Z E T apostrophe Z I. For those of you who failed, you take ten psychic damage. For those who succeeded, you take five psychic damage. And we're going to have to call it no. at that point. As you find oh. the corrupted pod. My tiny servants don't save, but they're immune to psychic damage. So. Yeah. They have no psyche. So, I want to thank all of you for playing. I like to leave it in a, cl a cliffhanger. We're kind of at the right time when we wanted to end up anyway. Didn't want to dive in a bit more. Um, did not expect a unicorn. That literally is a result of a random roll, but I said, what the hell, I'll go with I it. I did not expect today that I would kill a unicorn. Well, you know, uh, not every day you can wake up and say that. Uh, we are going to be taking another break, but then back hopefully for a much longer stretch. So we'll be back on not the 9th, so it'll be the 16th should be our next game. Uh, hopefully at the same time. If you want to watch, watch live, you can go to twitch.tv slash encaf1. Uh, Sundays at 4 o'clock Atlantic. Uh, but there are other ways to keep in touch with what we're doing. How about we talk about them? Well, we archive our shows on YouTube uh, at the NCAF1 uh, YouTube channel, I believe. The uh, yep. description will be in the video, I'm sure. Uh, you can please uh, like and subscribe for the videos to get more. If you hit the bell, you'll get notifications when new ones drop. So if you're seeing this after the fact, uh, thank you, and we'll see you again next time. And well, the, the, before we get to that, uh, there are. This is the 33rd episode that's been broadcast. 32 are now available on the YouTube channel. Great, Scott. We started this a couple of years before we started doing the extra YouTube. So there's a lot of backstory you might not be aware of. If people want to dig into the backstory or ask questions or hey comment about things, hey uh, Marie, what can they do about that? Well, we have a Facebook page that I may have been neglecting a little bit, but I'm <laughs> going to work on that. Um, <laughs> so uh, you can check out it's Legend of the Drowned Isles uh, on Facebook, which is linked in the description of the YouTube. Uh, I don't know if it's on Twitch or not, but hey, it's on the YouTube. It page. should probably be there if it's not. I'll should, go consult our web web guru. <laughs> Crap, that's me. Uh, so thank um, you, thank you for oh, watching. And, oh. that. and then, if you want a more direct link to us, we do have the group, which is Watchers, where you can more actively ask questions, and we try to answer to the best of our abilities, or say we don't know, or we cannot say. Or maybe we forgot, which is also yeah. sometimes it happens, unfortunately, with so many uh, things. Bernard. <laughs> Good poll. You guys have pulled out some names that even I forgot, which is great. <laughs> So, uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully, you're going to have some fun playing your own game. If you do, why not stream that? That'd be kind of cool. I'd, I'd watch it at least once. I get busy. Thank you, and thanks to my players. And uh, good night. I gotta, I gotta go find the button. How do we do uh, this? Again? Uh, <laughs> awkward uh, wave. Um, everybody, uh, <laughs> awkward freezing wave. until it's kind of the. Uh,